It is. And we're recording. So, I guess, I start, which, which script I want to start with first here? Uh, just go to call to order. We won't need the scripts until we okay. get to the, uh, the budget items. Okay, I'll call the meeting to order at 7 o'clock at City Hall of Stoneville. Uh, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I just want to say as a matter of procedure, we have our auditor here tonight who is going to be presenting the audit. Um, the council has a, an ordinance about where they like uh, items to be uh, suggested, but I wanted to recommend uh, that the council move to suspend the agenda and uh, open with... Um, Item 10, yeah, item 10, item 10A, yeah. After we get through public comment, so that's item number 7, once that one is complete, then uh, the recommendation would be that somebody moves to suspend the agenda and open up item 10A, and we can get there after public comment's over, so. Okay. Well, we'll go for roll call. All right, uh, Mayor Roger Perry. Here. Council President Adina Oliveris. Present. Councilor Jeff Hensley. Here. Councilor Ray Jackman. Yeah. Councilor Brian Lewis. Okay. We have a quorum, Mr. Mayor. Okay, we have visitors. Mm -hmm. uh, Joseph Parsons. Peggy Bishop. Resident. Yeah. Okay. Do we have a motion to pay the bills? I make a motion we pay the bill. Any second? No, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. How about the got a motion to approve the minutes for last? I'll make a motion we accept the minutes. I'll second. From the May 19th meeting. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. I guess we now we're down to public comment. Anybody has a comment they want to public they want to speak of, they can give the they got three minutes to put the point across. Thank you, Mr. 30825 Spring Street. I have one question for the City Council. And you may answer no comment if you'd like. And there's a reason I'm doing this, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. Um, have any of you knowingly misappropriated any funds from the City of Soda? Uh, councilors, I'm going to say that if an attorney were here, he would recommend that you all say no comment or not respond, but that is up to you. That is what an attorney would tell you if you were here. <laughs> no response. Yeah. Okay. No comment. No. Thank you. Yep. Like I said, there's a reason. Yeah. That's it. Cool. Okay. I guess we're going to skip. Is, well, I wanna, anyone have a motion we can skip down to... Uh, 10A for the auditor to speak at this time instead of going through the rest of this. I'll make a motion that we suspend the agenda and skip to 10A. Second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion well, carries. Okay. Got the floor. I'm lucky, right? <laughs> so I know that you all have received the draft report, which. Um, we've extended a few times just a, for comment. Um, I do have some letters that need to be signed once you've approved it, and we do need to get this filed with the Secretary of State by June 30th. So I need to have signed documents in my hand by June 27th in order to meet that deadline. Um, the Secretary of State won't, won't extend it anymore, so um, I think we've asked for two or three extensions already. So, um, they've been pretty lenient with us, um, and one other um, audit client that is in a similar position where you've had some turnover. So. Um, I don't know where you exactly want to start, um, if you want to start with the report or with the letters first. Um, one of the letters um, is just what we call a letter to those charged with governance. Um, that would be um, it's a little bit, I think it's like four pages long, and it has some journal entries on the back of it. Um, this is just a letter that um, explains what your responsibilities are, what our responsibilities are with regards to the audit. It also um, talks about estimates, if there's any significant estimates that need to be made. Um, in your case, um, the only real estimate that is significant would be depreciation, not just depreciable lives on your fixed assets. Um, that's all this letter is. And then it 
it, it will show you the um, proposed audit adjustments that we're proposing um, in the summary form. Um, and that's something you're going to leave for us to be able to review? Is it your expectation that we review it sitting here tonight and sign it? Um, I, you got these already, didn't you? Yeah, so uh, the council got the the, uh, the draft that Peter sent me. Okay. So I printed that out. And, uh, Which one is it? They have it. So, <laughs> yeah. so there's a big thick one, oh, yeah, yeah. Right. which is the audit report. And then yeah, there's the letters. The, the most recent one that Peter had sent me was the yeah. draft Yeah, report. and I have them for the new ones this morning. Sure there weren't letters. Uh, sorry, we there didn't were no letters? Uh, no. Not in his most recent document. Oh, okay. So. I will get those to you so you can send them out the email because okay. I only have one set. We were missing page 44 on. 45, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, okay. okay. Um, the other letter is um, the what we call an internal control letter. It's um, those things that we find during the course of the audit where there have been some um, Things that we found that we, we feel that the, the council should know in order to beef up your um, internal controls. Um, you do have only one person doing things, so it's real important that the council be very involved and over, with oversight and take making sure that things are being done appropriately, um, since there is only one person. Um, that's and that's the case in a lot of our small districts. There's only one person doing a job and. They do everything, so it's just important to make sure that you maintain your internal controls. And so be, I am the be watchful. question queen, and I'm sorry. Do you uh -huh. want me to question as it goes on or hold them until sure. you've no. finished? Okay. Go ahead. So we do have our accountant coming in and doing some of the work. Perfect. So okay. um, the concept that he's the only one that does it is not correct. Okay. I mean, well, and that's not what, yeah, and that will obviously right. we'll take that into account when we do the audit for the June 30, 22 years. And I and I'm the one who takes all the checks to the bank. And deposits them, so I, nice. I check. I get checks and balances Sounds that like way too. Sounds like we get to uh, yeah. Yeah. update our internal control questionnaire for you guys. <laughs> um, there were a couple things that came up. Um, capital assets weren't being tracked, um, so and it's just important to keep track of those on a on a monthly basis if you can, or at least annually, so that you can make sure that your depreciation schedule is current and updated. Um, and that will become, I'll explain why that's important once we get to the report. Um, the other one was there was some over expenditure, there was an over expenditure in, in um, uh, I'll bear with me, I haven't looked at this letter anyway. Um, which is, an, it's just an OMS, it's a budget law violation, we just have to record it and, and let you know that it was there. Um, and then uh, I think those are the only three things that are of great importance on that letter. Um, so when we get to the report, the report, you're right, has a lot of stuff in it. <laughs> it's just as boring to review it as it is for you guys to read it. <laughs> so the first, the first page just lists out who the city council was, who the... Um, administrators were, and um, it, it's just a listing of your city officials. Um, the next one is the table of contents, and I'm not going to go through each of these items on the table of contents because I'm going to go through them as we go through the report. So okay, we, can I, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're fine. So this is the, the budget year. So I became a counselor a year and a half ago, and Anthony Morales, I took his place. So he's still on there? This was the for the year ending June 30, 2021. Okay. And I was already a counselor then. Okay, then we need to get updated information okay. so we can make a correction. I'm like, we couldn't sit in the same this seat. This is what we were that provided. Yeah. Okay. This is the information we were provided. Sorry, I, I, will, okay. I will get on your nerves at yeah. the end and I apologize. Yeah. Nope, that's Good fine. to know. A lot, a lot of this was provided originally last fall when we had a different city administrator yeah. and things. So. so if you can get me, um, I get Peter actually, since he's alone. <laughs> You wouldn't mind emailing him what the correct um, city council was at the time. Too, right? Yeah, we had to list the people who were um, serving in okay, that position. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. During you'll that see the dates year. that everybody served. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I wasn't employed here during that fiscal year. Yeah, yeah, I know, but it was like a two weeks. <laughs> Yeah. She's like, oh man, I'm going to be your dope tomorrow. Yeah. You got his name on the report already. <laughs> okay, so once you get into the financial section, the very first section you're going to get to is what we call the MDNA, which is the Management Discussion and Analysis. 
for, for those that aren't super comfortable reading all the rest of it, this is probably where I would suggest you start. This part of the report summarizes and highlights those um, items in the report that um, are important as far as numbers go. Um, it will tell you, it gives you financial highlights, it's going to give you an overview of the financial statements, um, it will give you some numbers, to, comparative numbers to look at. Um, it explains the fund accounting and the governmental funds, which um, we'll, I'll explain more as we get into the report. Um, where you can find the notes to the financial statement, um, that sort of thing. So, and as you s go through all the pages, you're just going to start to see tables. Um, there's one that shows your condensed statement of net position, another that shows your condensed statement of activities. Um, this is all shown in detail further in the report. Also talks about your proprietary fund, which is your um, water fund. And then it talks about some highlights, you know, um, of budgetary highlights, things that were budgeted for, um, if it was over or actual, or, you know, what percentage of actual was it to compare to your budget, and an explanation if it was significantly higher or significantly lower. Um, talks about... Where is that at? Where is that on one? page... Nine. Oh, page nine. I don't wonder if it's way behind. Yeah. <laughs> and you said that was proprietary fund? Uh, the proprietary fund is a budget but above it, but the budgetary highlights for the general fund are Okay, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Um, Debbie, yes. I, want to I did send those updates about the council members to Peter a few months ago. So. Oh, well. I'll make a note. And again, dumbing it down, what's net position mean? Um, I can explain that better once we get to okay. the state. Okay. Let me just make another note about one. Kind of get you through the MDA. Now we're at what's called the basic financial statements. So the statement of net position is a statement that, for some reason, Gatsby thought was important um, for everybody to have. This would be um, recording all of your income and expenses, your liabilities, your um, any other assets that you might have that aren't reported on a governmental base fund basis. So this would be like if you were a for-profit business. This is going to show you exactly what your receivables are, what your um, if you have any debt, what the, that debt is going to be included in there, if your fixed assets are all included in there, um, and then any um, you'll also see some things that have to do with the OPEP related resources and, and um, liabilities. And then it comes down to a net number, which shows you what your net position is. So if you turn to page 12. Your net position for your governmental activities is a little over a million dollars, and for your business type activities, it's not quite four hundred thousand dollars. So basically, that's just all of your assets minus all of your liabilities. And what's what's governmental activities versus Gover business type activities? Governmental activities would be your water, anything you bill for. Governmental activities are your general fund. It's all fund based. Okay. Okay. The next page, which is page 13, is your statement of activities. This shows all of your income expenses and where it comes from. And on the other page is, is where your property taxes and all the rest of that information. It's a, it's a two page. When you get it in a bound copy, it'll be face, they'll face each other, so it'll make more sense. And again, you'll see that we broke out the governmental activities versus the business type, which is the water utility. So I'm sorry. Um, a million dollars? We have a million dollars of assets? <laughs> or? On, if, if you, that's looking at it as if you were a for-profit business. Okay. When we get to the governmental statements, you'll probably see that that number is not quite as high. Okay. Okay. 
This is it, but this is including all your debt, all your equipment, all of your infrastructure, all our land, all, everything that's on the depreciation schedule is included on that statement. Land, buildings, everything. Yep. Whole city. And I'm sorry if everybody else on yeah. the council knows no. this. I don't. No, so. I know. I'm I, still learning. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you asked me questions because I had a lot of questions myself. <laughs> And you know, you know better how to answer asking than I do, so go for it. Okay, so on page 14, we start the governmental fund. This is the balance sheet. This is probably more like what you see. I, I'm not sure what your monthly reports look like, but I'm sure that they're done on a governmental basis um, because you probably you do you probably give them budget to actual numbers. Yeah, on yeah. the uh, the yeah. QuickBooks statements. Yep. So those don't in these. This balance sheet, as you can see, does not include your fixed assets, doesn't include your debt, doesn't include any. And we may have to use it, move that decimal point. <laughs> yeah. This is this will it more accurately shows you what you have to spend because it's based on your budget type thing. Okay. And you'll see where we do a reconciliation on page 15 of the governmental fund to the the net position statement. So you can see where the differences are. So for fund basis, our governmental fund basis, your fund balance is $105,000. And each of these items is what changed it to equal the million. But basically we have, what, 1,028,000 or, yeah, 28,000 and for net proceeds? That's your net position based on the <coughs> the GASB 56 statement. Okay. Okay. But based on governmental fund on your, your ability to spend, that's what page 14 is. Work. And in English, what you just said, the GASB statement is, I'm going to talk medicine to you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh my God, God. <laughs> you just told me. <laughs> I've dealt with doctors for uh, the last year. I've been going through cancer treatment. Oh, so, so sorry. Uh, yeah. um, GASB. GASB is the Governmental Accounting Standards Board. They're the ones who pro who issue statements that we have to incorporate into your into your financial statements. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. So then on page see, page sixteen is your statement of revenues and expenditures and your changes in your fund balance. So this is this is what you're at what you actually have reported as far as income and expenses for each, the general fund and the street fund, in this particular case, the water fund has its own statement. And then we do a reconciliation of this as well on page 17. You'll see where we took the um, excess of revenues over expenditures and reconcile it back to the other statement, which was the um, on page 13. Can you say that again, please? So page 17 reconciles the governmental fund accounting, the, okay. the governmental fund statement on page 16, and reconciles the excess of revenue over expenditures to page 13. I need to go back to school. <laughs> this was their idea of making things more understandable. I don't think all I've done is complicated. Yeah, this is so page, yeah. page 16 is revenue and, and 13 is expenditures, so it's reconciling yeah. that. Is that what you're saying? No, 13 is revenue and expenditures as well. Huh. It's just at a, at a different basis because it's under. What they were, what I would consider, I try to explain it as being a for-profit business because you've included okay. things that you don't, wouldn't include in your governmental fund statements. Because hmm. I'm lost, yeah, because that doesn't make a lot of sense because page 13 basically breaks it down as you're talking about with the gas fee or whatever with the mm -hmm. 1.4 million. Is your fund balance, but that your net change in is $82,651. That number ties back. I don't see where that number comes out of there at all. But 
Oh, it's the, I'm sorry. It's the, government, <laughs> the governmental activities. I'm looking at the total instead of the right column. 65076 is your governmental activities. This is just your governmental activities, not your business type activities, which has its own column on page 13. Does that make sense now? Sure. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Maybe when I get time to analyze it, I'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah. And if you have questions, I'll leave my card. Feel free to email me. Okay. Okay. Or Peter. Peter. Do you have a character limit when we email? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is war and peace coming over. <laughs> okay. So on page 18 is this is the, pri the proprietary phone, which is your water fund. And again, we're going doing similar type statements. The statement of net position is if, as if it was a for-profit business. So it includes all of your assets, including your fixed assets, includes all of your liabilities, including any debt, and comes up with a net position of the $397,000. So when it talks about our liabilities and our debt, is it the liabilities and the debt for just the water system, or yes. is it the city? No, just the water system. Because yeah, the other two were on this, on this other page. That was for the general and street. We're on page 14. So basically, this is really dumbing it down. You go and audit each fund separately and provide a report on each. No, that's no. Okay, never mind that. So what we do is we audit everything in general. Okay. Some of it happens to be the street fund. Some of it happens to be the water fund. Some of it's the general fund. Everything that we, uh, any testing that we do is all done based on materiality and on random selection through your check register. So if you're, if, if for instance, your expenditures, if we're going to be looking at expenditures, we're going to go through your expenditures. We're going to determine those, anything over materiality are going to be looked at immediately. And then in order to get our sample size, whatever that happens to be, we will randomly or selectively select other items to be looked at. And then we look at any, we look at your, the canceled checks, we look at the invoices, we see that we make sure they've been approved. I would Google it, but that would seem like I'm doing my phone and not listening to you. Oh. So can you define for me materiality? We, make, we take a percentage based on what your total uh, revenue is, total assets, total liabilities, and it's based on our experience with you, the size of your district, and our experience with other districts of similar size. I'm still going to Google that later. <laughs> <laughs> so can I ask a quick question? Mr. Mayor? When you change that over to putting everything in the general fund, is that going to make it easier or more difficult for the auditor to do that? Question for the auditor. Okay, so now they have three separate. Yeah. So we have had yeah. three separate accounts, mm -hmm. and he's putting them all into a general fund. Each as one. As long as it, the expenditures are being broken out by fund type. Yeah, they're be, yeah they're yeah. they're being broken out by program. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so we can, we'll print it by class, because you're using QuickBooks still? Yeah. Yeah. So see, that's what I thought you were confused about, is that we've already gone to a general oh, no, no. fund. I was just trying to get a, it almost, when you have stupid people, it oh, might be nice, you. it might be nice yeah. to like really say, you're not, you're well, not first time on, uh, this is kind of what we're looking at and how we do. I've never been through this process uh -huh. before, so I, I'm trying to catch up going, what are you talking about and what are you doing and what are you looking at? Yeah. And I read this, trust me, I read yeah. every single word, <laughs> twice, and I, I still... I'm really proud of you, you get a gold star. <laughs> <laughs> okay, chocolate. I, I, try, I, try, I, try, I try not being emphasis. Uh, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it probably put you to sleep pretty easily. Huh? Yeah. I'm sorry, <laughs> I thought that's my oh, no, goal. No, no. So basically what you're doing is just using one checking account and then and then coding everything to a general street or court card. Yep. That's that's not unusual. And thank you for your patience and understanding. Oh, I appreciate no it. Okay, so then on page 19, you have your proprietary fund statement of revenue and expenses. Again, this is as if you were a for-profit business. And it breaks down your charges for services, anything that was intergovernmental, and then your operating expenses are broken out by um, personnel services, materials, and services depreciation. And then the proprietary fund, because it's a business type fund, gets an extra statement, which is a statement of cash flows. This just reconciles the difference between um, beginning and ending cash and shows, breaks it out as to how it was um, received or spent. 
So when somebody brings us a cash payment for their water bill, we need to, that's documented somehow? Someplace in your system. But within the audit, you, you're you looking at that? I'm not looking at any, I'm not looking at individual water bills, no. no. Just wondering. Yeah, no, we um, look at that analytically. Um, and some at the, at the larger cities, they have the ability to provide us, you know, gallons of water that they've sold at so much price, and we can do analytics. Um, and that's kind of how we, a lot of our audit is, we try to do analytics as much as possible, um, but we still do a, quite a bit of substitute testing, which is expenditure testing, um, you know, making sure your bank reconciles, um, tying out, you know, other types of expenses, um, you know, getting information on, on any fixed assets you want to purchase during the year, that sort of thing. Um, the other section that might be really useful would be um, the notes of financial statements, <coughs> which starts on page 21 and runs through page 39. Um, this will to go through and explain each of the different sections um, of the different reports that we've just gone through. Um, it also just gives a summary of significant accounting policies as far as what the reporting entity is, explains what government-wide versus financial statements are, which is the difference between the statement of net position and the statement of assets, liabilities, and fund balance. Um, it will talk about all the policies that you have, you know, the number of funds that you have, the types of funds you have, talks about deposits and investments. Um, we'll go through each of the items on the balance sheet as far as receivables, grant revenue, and it will talk about how they're measured, um, capital assets. It, like I said, this, this would be the core um, of the information. The MD&A and, and the notes of the financial statement, in my opinion, are the most important statements. Goes through budget law. <laughs> and then it then it gets into each of the like the cash and it will break out the cash for you by a fund um, and also by source originally it will break out your fixed assets for you um, for both the governmental funds and for the proprietary funds the water fund um, talks about the situation compensated absences long term liabilities all of that is detailed out here <clears throat> it's under excess of expenditures over uh, appropriations. Um, these are um, debt. No, that what was that is um, the the excess is the difference between what was budgeted and what was actually spent. Okay. And in that particular line item, you were overextended without having corrected um, through a budget res a resolution to um, adjust the budget. So I'm just. No budget. Basically overlooked. It, yes, it got missed. Yeah. We are um, have the a budget to actual the next fiscal year too. Yeah. <laughs> the budget to actual statements start on page forty, and so if you look at those, that will tell you, um, you know, what the budget was and what the um, actual numbers were and what the, the variance was. So you can see specifically where those happen. I kind of think we know where they. <laughs> and it does them for all of them. The um, uh, only other schedule that is here is the schedule of property tax transactions. Um, that just reconciles your property tax receipts, what was billed, what's still owed at the end of the year by year. And then there will be a couple of, uh, there will be at least one additional letter, which is the OM, what we call the OMS letter, so a letter of Oregon minimum standards. It's a letter that we have to sign, and until the report's approved, we don't issue that letter. So that's why it's not included in the back. And what is that letter? It's, a it's letter called the you... Oregon minimum standards. Okay. It'll be on page, I can tell you what page it will be on. <laughs> It'll be on page just 45 and 44 and 45. Oh, I didn't get it. No, but it will be in the final draft. Anything that's signed, like our opinion letter, 
and that particular letter aren't included in the draft because we have to sign them first. So they will be in the final draft. So do we, I, I don't know what Alex has received, but do we get an idea of your opinion, your summary, your overall on, you know? The opinion is a clean opinion. I mean, there's no qualifications or it's not qualified, it's not disclaimed, it's going to be just a, like you've always gotten. Okay, so I've never seen this before, okay. so I have no idea what we always got. Okay. You'll, you'll be getting all of it. Yeah, but, so you'll you, get, when you get the final copy, you're going to get a file, final <clears throat> bound copy, and that bound copy will include any letters that are required, the, the opinion letter and the OMS letter. And so the opinion letter is basically, for lack of a better word, your grade on how we did, or your um, summary of, no. No, um, it's more of... Um, there's a specific format that has to be followed, and in there is our opinion, as well as a whole bunch of other, you know, technical terms like what you've been seeing. Like um, things that have been missed. No, that's not part of the opinion. Okay. Um, that's what happens is, is we do your audit, we look at the overall audit, and make sure that all any differences that we came up with. Um, are immaterial, and if they're immaterial and there's nothing major that we're concerned about, then we issue a clean, what's called a clean opinion. It's just, it's not a qualified opinion, it's not disclaimed, it's just the normal, everyday clean opinion. So were there any abnormalities that you had? There were some, um, but, and it had to do with paying out um, that compensated leave, which I'm sure you all know about. But the board passed a resolution and, and approved it. So there was, you know, even though we might have been concerned about it, it was signed off on. So there was nothing, nothing for us to report. So knowing that there's been the, the concept of issues in the past, and I'm going to dance around that just a little bit, and being new to this, as we sit here, are we okay? Um, I, I would imagine there's things we need to do better, but I know we need to do better. Yeah. We've already started doing them better. And you have started, As yeah. far as, but um, I'm really engaged with this. I want to make yeah. sure we know in English what we need to do. That's why it's important for you as a council to stay on top of things. You need to be involved in what's going on in the office. Um, you have internal controls that you're put, you've put into place. Um, things are being signed twice as I sat here watching. Um, you're approving the bills. I mean, you're doing all the right things. Those particular, those two particular items that came up, the board approved. So the board knew about it. So the biggest thing is to ask questions. Yes, yes. Why are we doing this? Yes. You know, everybody should understand what the policies are. Your employee policies, um, you, you all need to know what that is. Um, so who's the board? Is that the auditing board? Or is no, that's the, the council. council. Yes. No, the okay. city council. That's I'm sorry. I... <laughs> Sometimes I'm working with board. <laughs> right, the right, 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 right. Well, we're, really we're, we're all the same at our, as far as I'm concerned. But yeah, 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 yeah. No, the city council. You know, you all have the ultimate responsibility. So. To be a sarcastic comment, we didn't have that luxury before to ask questions. <laughs> well, I'm just yeah. saying that, you know, as being the board or the council, the council yeah. um, some of the things that were represented to, uh, to us I felt were a little misrepresented and, and so the you approval just need to ask more questions. Yeah. So the approval process probably was very, very great, you know, vague in it in its overall oversight right. is all yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. We've come a long way. Yes. yes. We're trying to get there. That's why you're here tonight. Well and I was I used to work, I was the one that originally worked on this audit. So I've I, I know I've met you before. Oh yeah. Um, because sure. I've, I did come to a couple of board president council presentations um, in the first couple of years and then after that we never never seem to get scheduled. So and we're we're more than happy to do that. We always and that's very are unfortunate. To come. <laughs> yes. Because. yes. And, and as a citizen, I have been to meetings now for two, three years, mm -hmm. and I can see how they have brought it up. Yeah. To a better grade. Yeah. Well, it's, I and just so, <coughs> and I I can see that as well yes. from when I first started moving <laughs> on it. So. Or Alex is hammered. Yeah. Can you explain <laughs> this to me? Uh, I don't understand it. Yeah. It's good for me to say, you know, as the, the city recorder, I am here to know all of these things. And I do expect, you know, at any point in time, a counselor to call me up and go, hey, I want to come meet with you and talk about X, Y, and Z things. And 
I'm, I'm here to know these things and be prepared. The biggest thing that would get in the way of that is not knowing what all of our rules and stuff are, but I am getting better about that because I am digitizing all of our ordinances and resolutions, <laughs> finally. So not only do I have a rule book where I can get familiar, you all have a place where you can easily go and get familiar. And, uh, you know, if maybe there's a point in time where I'm not doing things exactly the way I'm supposed to there, you can go, hey, what about that? It says it right there. And I can go, oh, you know what? You're right. So <laughs> there, there are lots of good things happening that put us in a much definitely, better position to do definitely well. definitely is. Yeah. And when things come up, um, especially with, like, payroll, because I know that's, that's an area that everybody's been concerned about, you know, ask, if you're not sure, if something comes up on an agenda and you're not sure what the policy is, ask for the policy. That will help you be educated enough to make a decision on whether or not you want to approve something or not. Say we're trying to survive as a city, right? Yeah. yeah. I know that we call it BAMC. BAMC, before Alex. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm BA before Adina. We um, really relied heavily on um, CIS and LLC to help mm -hmm. because we had nothing. Um, to try and find out what are we supposed to do, what, how are we supposed to do it, yeah. and I think perhaps before we were not aware that we could do that, and we're told we couldn't, yes. and now... We were instructed that we couldn't. Yes, and now I guess what? Know. So one of the things I'm going to recommend is um, the Department of Revenue um, and the Secretary of State sometimes, but Department of Revenue puts on a budgeting clause. And they cover a whole bunch of stuff. It's it's free. They travel yes. all over the United, all over Oregon to do them. They have them. You should, you, I know there's been some in um, Albany before. Um, they're, but they're free. And if you get on their mailing list now for that, they'll let you know the schedule once they put it. It's usually November, December, January is typically the time period of when they do that. It's a it's a great thing for oh, you yeah. to. And which organization is it? Uh, Department, Department of Revenue. Department of Revenue puts it on. Uh, and I'll try to see if I can find the link. I can send it to you. So. But that's that would be a, a really great thing for, for you guys to, at least, it's, since it's free especially. So, um, I like that price. Yeah. And those <laughs> who go uh, for the budget committee, too, is it? Is it yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I recommend it to all of my audit clients. And I even send some of my entry-level staff to them because it's, just a really great way for them to get familiar with the budget documents, how they should be completed, you know, what's the purpose of them, that sort of thing, how to go about doing budget resolu resolutions. That's an um, awesome And they resource. also have, I think, I believe there's a book that you can get off, on, offline as well that will go through a lot of that information for you as well. I find that to be incredibly useful. I even go back and refer to it. <laughs> That's good, because this is, this is a lot of information. It is. And, you know, when you get information, especially if you don't speak the language, you, your brain, my brain, spends a little bit of time trying to figure out what the heck did you just say. <laughs> and um, unfortunately, it's prescripted a lot of, <laughs> I, I mean, a lot of the information is, is required by right. different standards, and we're, we're not given much leeway in how to um, put that into the report. So. Cool. So I guess I got one more question on your audit yeah. as far as the abnormalities. Uh, you said it was approved by council. What threw the flag up for you? Just looking at the numbers from one year to the next. I know because it was a big payout. It was a big payout. Yeah, it's, it was when, when I saw Peter brought it to me and I looked at it, and I'm like, holy cow! I yeah. said, did somebody approve this? And he goes, there's board board there's a board resolution. I'm like, okay. Which didn't make sense, but yeah, yeah, that, that was there. The transparency wasn't there before. Yes. Well, like there was a lot of uh, stuff that went through that we didn't understand was even going through. Well, it felt like you know they made the rules up to get them there, but we didn't have any way to backtrack to oh, you know. Okay. No, no, no one had access. It. None of the council had access to the back offices at all. Oh, well, that's. They said that. That's not. They, she had a key, and she was the one that had the key, and then no one else could even go in there and get or, anything. Or if you ask a question or, you know, challenged anything, it was really none of your business. That's not acceptable. Or I mean, she did you get told that? I'm telling you. I, I did, but, you know, I mean, it was a, or she would, you know, explain it in a manner that just kind of rambled in circles and was That's very intimidating. confusing. So. Baffled not intimidating. I, I don't intimidate very easily, but. Uh, yeah, things like that would definitely raise a red flag for me. Yes. I couldn't imagine there wasn't a check and balance. Nobody nobody would want, no, it's like, 
everywhere I've been in my ancient years, there's always a check and balance. Yes. But that's kind of what we thought this auditing so portion was about, your, right? Control controls in place. You know, yeah. your procedures for your deposit, <clears throat> your procedures for your checks being written, um, procedures for um, people coming in and paying bills. Or, Let's see. You know, Every year we went through an audit process and we try to go through these documents, but mm -hmm. they're legal documents to read, like Adina's saying, and they're not in English. So, yeah. you know, once again, we didn't have another resource or an avenue <laughs> to make you challenges have whenever. You access to us. As a council, you yeah, always I, have access to us, no matter what anybody tells you. I think, yeah, well, I don't think we knew that. Well, kind yeah. Of like we've now uh, talked to other people. We, it's like, <laughs> yeah, even, though we, even though we were sitting here, they were the ones that controlled mm -hmm. the call, the call the attorney not to ask any question or anything too. We did we even as huh? even as being <coughs> there or a council member out here, council president, which I've been council president for many years. I had no authority to call a lawyer to find out what's going on or anything about this. Yeah. You had the same face I'm on just, yes. That you should have so, been able to call the attorneys yeah. anytime you wanted. It's yeah. a different world now though. Yes. Okay. But anyways, Good. like I said, yeah. uh, well, I'm, I'm gonna make sure that I have so, yeah, that's that's what we probably should, something that, that should be addressed because we do have a council policy that kind of says you need to direct yeah. those to the city manager or the mayor. Mm -hmm. uh, so if, if there's an appetite on the council for changing that, we can certainly do that. We need more transparency for sure. Yeah, absolutely. It's good to know that the lawyer just sent a, a letter saying his rates have gone up, oh. but still oh. way up, way below market for us. Oh. Okay. One seventy-five to two hundred an hour now. Thank you. That's it not, is what it is. That's you not can't really say bad. I'm never getting to my level. No. <laughs> there you go. I only have, I only have three cards with me for some reason. So I'm going to leave these. <clears throat> I'm also going to leave these two letters for you. So uh, the council, I know, needs to, uh, or the, the mayor needs to sign some of these letters, and yes. I need to sign a couple of those. So uh, I can leave them with you so you, you, have, you can read them. Yeah, read through them. And then, you, like I said, once you've approved the financial statements, you can go ahead and sign. The mayor needs to sign the journal entry approval form. And then um, there's a no legal letter because you didn't use an attorney um, for anything last year, so that needs to be signed by the mayor. And then there's what they call the management representation letter, which is four or five pages, and that gets signed by the mayor as well. Right. So I believe every year, or you know, every time we do this, uh, our approval process has to be done by June thirtieth. And, and you're saying that we're getting an extension due, this year? Technically, it's due twelve thirty one to the Secretary of mm. State. Um, we filed for an extension because we there had been so much turnover. We had, were, we didn't have all the documents. I'm just saying, every year it seems like in April, May, that's when we're going through the budgeting process, and it's right. all approved, and then we turn it in. And that's the budget. Okay. I'm talking the about audit of the last audit. Oh, okay, gotcha, okay. gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So typically, the audit would have been done by 12:31 because they're due to the Secretary of State by that point. But okay. because of all everything that was going on with all the turnover, the government office being closed out yeah, for we, two years, and then yeah, we yeah, and we didn't, we weren't able to get everything we needed to complete the audit, so we had to file for a couple of extensions. Okay, yeah. cool. Thank you. Just so you know, this this isn't too unusual for it to be done this late. It's preferable that it gets done by the end of the year, but yeah. I have seen several other that regularly end up doing that. You're like. In rural areas where there are fewer, where there are more local governments and fewer auditors available, sometimes that results in a time crunch yeah. for the the one auditor out there. So now we, we have six months to get twenty twenty two done. Right. Yes. Right. Um, one of the large <laughs> firms in Portland who did a tremendous number of audits um, decided to get out of doing municipal audits, oh, and they're only doing consulting. And we have been just lambasted with RFPs oh, for audit goodness. services. That I mean, our schedule is full. Hmm. We're going to take care of our clients, existing clients, before we even think about taking Thank on you for that. else. So, no. um, so yeah, there, this next year I would anticipate there's going to be a lot of late audits. I was going to say, I'm so we got six months to get this year done, right? Done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we like to have them done by top, top. December 31st no. <laughs> just because it, it, the, that way they're not into our tax season. Right. Um, and so it's easier for us to have them all done and just maybe have one or two that our file by January 31st type thing, so. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Me, me and our accountant will be able to get all of that to you okay. in short order, so Good. as soon as you need it. Are you using, using somebody local? Uh, yeah, Smith Albany. Oh. Uh, Linda Nichols. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I know them very well. We yeah. refer business back and forth. Yeah. So once those letters get signed by whomever, yes, um, they we need to have this these signed letters by June 27th in June order 27th. for us to get everything done and produced and to the Secretary of State. Can they be faxed to you? Yes. Okay. Or emailed even. So I'm going to 
We need to have another special meeting this month anyway. So my recommendation would be that we have another special, when we have that special meeting, we have approval of the letters to okay. there. So you'll have time to read them and everything else and call them if you have questions. So that, Yes. I, um, like I said, I'm going to leave these three cards. I'm going to leave these letters with you. Thank you. And then um, just when you have everything ready, just email it all to Peter. <coughs> okay. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you. Really appreciate yeah. you oh, your no time. No problem. You're yeah. very well. Peter has been great to work with, and I really liked your presentation. So oh, thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah. Peter's uh, my partner, and he's awesome. You, you just did. roll your eyes or sigh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> no, she made that look you did. I know. <laughs> well, for a while, I was the only part. I was the only owner. So it's nice to have Peter on board so <clears throat> to help me and spreads out the work a little bit. And he's really great to work with. So. All right. Well, thank, thank you. you. You're very welcome. You guys have a good evening. You, you too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that was insightful. My brain wants to herniate right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess we, now we can back up to uh, <clears throat> eight and three recorders report. Before we return to regular order, so yeah, uh, you all got the um, the QuickBooks report uh, that our accountant prepared. Um, the biggest expenditure by far was uh, the bill we had to pay to correct equipment to take care of all of our new water meters. Uh, it took them a while to, to like cash it, so I was like, come on, you better do it before the fiscal year ends. But they did, so yeah, we uh, remember we passed a supplemental budget for that, and then we have finally spent it. So Yay! Yeah, it's all good. This is good. Um, other than that, nothing like crazy happened. Um, city recorder's report full. Did anybody have any questions about finances? No. Go on. Okay. We'll go on to the fuller city recorder's report. Um, so a few things in there. Uh, there are three conferences I wanted to attend. I guess it's a really busy conference season. Um, these would be the only three conferences that I would request to attend during this upcoming fiscal year. Um, that is the uh, City County Insurance Services, the Oregon Association of Municipal Recorders, and the League of Oregon Cities. Uh, so let me pull up my... My list of conferences over here. Uh, so, City County Insurance Services, uh, this is August 24th to 26th in Salem. Um, it's going to be <coughs> fun uh, because I guess somebody from Sotoville hasn't attended for a few years. So, um, we get they, a lot of the statewide organizations will do that if you haven't been there. Like, please come. We'll, we'll, and they'll even pay for my hotel if I want to. Wow. Uh, nice. It's in Salem, so I don't really think I need a hotel. No. Um, so that's well, if you get the amount of information at that as we got tonight, you may need it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it might not be safe to drive. Um, <clears throat> the next one is uh, the League of Oregon Cities, and that is uh, in Bend, the fifth through the seventh. So I would ask for a hotel for that. That would be four hundred dollars to attend the LOC conference, and then eighty dollars per night. Yeah, I know that's a bit of money. Um, we have this in the budget, though, right? Yeah. For that type of stuff. Yep. And what, then what line item is that? Uh, there is. It's in uh, the water. The water fund. Water fund pays for all of that. That's uh, a collective one for dues, mileage, and uh, trainings. So. Yeah. Like I say, I thought we had something budgeted for you guys to get your yep. your training in. I just couldn't remember where it was at. Yeah. And then JD will go to the the and and, Yeah. Yeah. It'll be lots of fun. And the last one is the Oregon Association of Municipal Recorders. That one is in Newport, so again, I would just drive back and forth because it's not terribly far um, from where I, I live in Lebanon, so it's not like terrible to drive from Newport um, every day there. So, Is it a one or two day? Uh, it's a three day, so the 28th oh. to the 30th. That's a long drive. That is. It's only an hour and a half. That's a lot of gas. Yeah, you're yeah. used to driving. In, in <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You miss old people, you might want to have something. Or, yeah. yeah. You might consider the hotel versus mileage yeah. to see yeah. what the difference is there yeah. as well. Yeah, right. yeah. you can do that too. Because if you're you you price is five fifty a gallon, yeah, you're still going to get mileage going once and back. So. Yeah, right. The last thing you're just using, we're hopefully going to get a Pacific Pride card, and we can just put that in. And yeah, but we still have to pay you mileage, right? Uh, if you pay, if I, if we just use the Pacific Pride card, you have mileage. Yeah. Okay. Well. It's either gas or a yeah. mile. I, I will put together once I, I want to get use the mileage cars if we get one for private use, though. Oh. Well, it is yeah. it is for it's work related, though. It's work related. Yeah. We'll look at it. Yeah, yeah I think yeah, that's something, for, weigh, that's something yeah. for review. You yeah. need to weigh one against the other to see which is the most. I mean, yeah. In your time, 
driving back and forth, you know, that's an hour and a half drive over, an hour and a half drive back, plus an eight hour course over there. I mean, so do. Personally, I think about it. Just look at the budget. If it's if it's in there, I think you know one or two nights for you to stay over there and and you know to associate with you know the people in the conference and stuff. I think it's I think it's worthwhile. Yeah. But like I said, you know, it depends on our our budgeting and stuff like that. So exactly. Yeah. The big big differences between these. So CIS is you know the insurance one, and that conference really focuses a lot more on insurance and liability topics. It's going to be like you know. How to survive an active shooter, you know, that kind of oh, thing would be like, yeah, shoot back. <laughs> yeah, we yeah, can do that. Back. We're probably the only city in Oregon that can do that. <laughs> it's all good, though. Um, yeah, so that's what that conference focuses on. Uh, League of Oregon Cities is a much wider array of uh, topics, so they, it's just like everything under the sun. Um, the big thing there is that they will cover a lot of changes in law that have happened, and that's usually the most important thing for city staff to go um, and be aware of. And then the last one is the Oregon Association of City or of Municipal Recorders. So that one is a lot more specialized, like CIS that focuses on more of the city recorder's duties. So public records, public meetings, election um, conducting, that kind of thing. Um, so that was uh, that conference. I'm also, you know, it's good to network with peers and get to meet people. And I also just got uh, elected to the board of the OAMR. So. <laughs> Yeah, my, my, it was that somebody resigned, so my turn only goes through the conference, actually, is when my, my term ends, but still a nice feeling. But I think it's important with your first year or so in this yeah. position to just be a sponge and, you know, get out there, you could know people and learn stuff. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as we, as we move forward, I, there are no shortage of meetings and things and entities that require somebody from Sotoville to go to things, so, you know, we will... I'm probably going to present a different list of you know things I'd like to attend every year, just based on what's going on, what I am called to help with, and that kind of thing. So this is just this year's list, and there are several others that are going to be held throughout the year that I'm not going to go to. These are going to be the three things that I want to go through this next year. So that's the conference list. Any questions beyond that? No. I don't know if you'll answer the question about coverage when you after you talk about vacation, or if you plan oh, to talk about. Yeah, the next one is a, a vacation request. So, um, I, yeah, I wanted to take a week off in August. Um, I haven't accrued uh, paid time off yet, so I take a, a I would take time off unpaid for a week. We do have a city policy that says that is okay um, as long as I elect to do it. And then I did talk to our accountant about the implication for. Um, uh, uh, benefit calculations, that kind of things, and she says it's not going to uh, hurt us at all. So, so you have you you start accruing immediately, don't you? But you can't actually draw on it until you've until been here. Been, yeah. So since the because I looked up the employee handbook, yeah, that it is because um, you you should have some earned hours, just not typically right. able to use them. Yeah. Right, because he has to serve a year before he's eligible. Yeah. So we can't prorate. Exactly. So because of our ordinances we can prorate it then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Huh? This sucks. <laughs> no. He 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 starts earning right. when he started. But is that's accruing. But he can't use it until he's been here a hundred and eighty days or six months or something. One, so yes, the employee handbook. One thousand six hundred and fifty days. One hundred one thousand six hundred and fifty hours. hours, yeah. So cure so sixty hours. Yeah. So So he has to meet that that spot in there, though he has to accrue that many hours before he's eligible. To use it. Right. Yeah. But, to be paid, to be they, paid, but. They, there can be an exception made for that if the council agrees. And I don't have a problem with him taking an unpaid Same as holiday unpaid. in August. Yeah. Just a or a week? Week. Just a week. We don't need to make a motion on it or anything like that, do we? Um, yeah, it'd probably be good for the council. We can't it. pay you for that week because you don't have it accrued. We can't <clears throat> pay, pay him for that week. We can, according to the employee handbook, as I read the other night, we can pay him what he's accrued so far. We can't pay him what he's going to accrue. So arbitrary numbers. So Let's say he's going to accrue two weeks a year, and by now he's only accrued three days. We can pay him three, and he can go... No paid for one day, but we can't pay him a f you know two weeks worth because he hasn't Cause earned anything. Yeah. I'm, I'm fine with not using anything I've accrued so far. Right. I think I want to get married next year and have some time off for a honeymoon. So <laughs> there you go. That's planning. Yep. Can't yep. Yep. Right. Right. 
Well, just so you know, Alex, we would love to pay you for your time off. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. We can get that change probably in the future. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can't pay what you haven't been earned yet. Exactly. So. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> but we certainly, uh, as long as we agree, according to our current handbook, like she said, our rules, we can let you do it without pay. So would anyone make yes. a motion that we could let uh, Alex take his week off? Yes, I make a motion and we allow Alex, our city recorder, his requested week off in August, is that correct? Yep. Without pay. Without pay. The first to the fifth. Second, second, second on that. Motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. So I have a follow-up question to yep. that. You're going to be gone several times in August, or once in August, no, several, twice in August and twice in September. Yeah. What do you, how do you envision the front office being covered? What will need to be done? If anything, what will you be doing? Yes, there are a few things there. Um, I can change the voicemail to say, um, city recorders on vacation, please leave a message, that kind of thing. And, you know, we can, we get all of those messages delivered to the office email. So I'll be looking at that to see, like, you know, if there's something that needs to be addressed right then. And those are on the um, weekends mostly, right? Yeah. No, these are during uh, the Actually, no, they're, they're all through the week. Yeah, yeah. they're like Wednesday, so, Thursday, Friday. And yeah. Yeah. Um, the big thing that I would need is for somebody to come and collect the mail. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if there are checks. That's, just, what, I was that's what I was finding KD, out. What there it you was. go. Yeah. <laughs> it's there. Just making sure, you know. Mm -hmm. I want to make want it to be open to everybody who wants to. Oh. You know, since, our, since our auditor is recommending that y'all get involved. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's, so, that's um, why I was asking when it was. So if we needed yeah. someone to pick up the mail and stuff like that, because I've been I'm doing it before you got here. So yeah, so yeah. So if somebody uh, pick it up and have somebody you know, sort it, look through it. Um, if there are checks, put them with the checks. And if yeah. there get them, other get them things, up, yeah. test it on the desk. Yes. Yeah. So that's uh, that would be the the two big things. If there's anything that needs to be addressed, um, if I get a voicemail that says there's a big problem, then I would, you know, call the council like, hey, this needs to get done, and that kind of thing. If really need be, we can have a remote meeting. <laughs> I know that'd be fun to facilitate, but... So like I told you before, I really um, support life-work balance, and yeah. I think when you're on vacay, you should be left alone. So you're checking messages and stuff, you, you're willing and you want to do it during your vacation as well? Yeah. Okay. Mm. Not much of a vacation, then. I hear you. Right, so done. the the last the last job I worked long term, um, I I didn't have uh, time off accrued yet, but it was remote. So and it was an early to afternoon work. So I I went twice to LA to visit my family, and I worked all through it. So I had the the evenings off, which was great. But this is going to be a big reprieve from that old work life balance. So okay. yeah. <coughs> And you'll be back in time on the August one to do the water bills. Yay. Yeah, so my, my intent is to be, yes, yeah, definitely the water bills will be taken care of. And they can be done a lot more quickly because of uh, trying to water meter. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. What's your second week off in August? So the 24th to the 26th is when... My conference yeah. is the 22nd through 25th, so we'll both be gone that week. Ooh, that's fine. That should be okay. Like I say, as long as Roger or somebody can pick up the yeah. mail. Um, next one is the city power bills. So there was this terrible thing that happened where Consumer Power, for the last since January, has been putting all of our bills into one account. Uh, and they called me up a week or two ago and said, "Hey, we've been putting all of your payments into one account, so we're turning off all the streetlights in the city. Good luck." Um, and there was also, I guess, a couple of them hadn't been paid in full, so. I transferred everything over that could into everything else, but there was about $1,000 out of balance, so that was paid out of an ACH because it just needed to be paid that day. Um, that is going to be an exception, not a rule. I think in the future, what I'm going to be doing is contacting the council when an expense like that needs to happen because we like to make sure there are controls. Um, but what I wanted to uh, put forth before you tonight is that now everything is in balance at Consumers Power. Um, they do have an option to pay bills all the time using ACH, so if the council is willing, uh, you can vote on that. If you would rather continue doing checks, uh, that's up to you, but I just wanted to present the option. ACH. Uh, auto auto cashing, yeah. So How do you get out of balance? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it said the... I mean, it, comes it was going, a monthly bill, right? Yeah, it was going all the way back to January. They said things weren't balancing, so... Hmm. Yeah, and in the future, should something like this come up, reaching out to one of us or all of us right. so we can look into it. Because 
I tell you, if they would have told me they're going to turn the lights on, but they have our money, I'd be in their office. Yeah. Yeah. We'd be talking, because that's ridiculous. They have an accounting error, not yeah, on us. It's their fault. Partially their mm -hmm. fault, and then partially us not having paid enough. Which doesn't make sense. Yeah. No. So, so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But I do find you don't fight the utility very well because there's only one utility. Yeah. They go, click, king. Mm. Well, we are a franchisee, so next time there's a yeah. franchise to negotiate, we'll be like, okay, this is what you're not going to do. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Great. And you, you know they'll give you solar power. The what? CPI solar. will give you free solar panels. They're pushing them right now. Because uh, Tesla's coming in, free energy. Yeah. Tesla's coming in, so they're giving you free panels. How many? How many giving away? <laughs> they'll not they'll come and do them. They'll come and do them for citizens. All you got to do is call CPI, <laughs> and that's why the rates are going up. Is because they got to get all the money they can before free energy comes in. Well, because the fact when, when, when the summer hits, power usage is going to go up higher, and they got to shut all the grids, all the grids down because no water, no power. <clears throat> and if they got so, all the dams empty, they do not produce the power, so it means they're going to be a drain on all the power systems. Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, if the council wants, we can vote on doing um, automatic payment. If not, we don't have to. So it's um, free. Yeah. There is a, a suggested motion there. Um, if you want to, somebody makes a motion. A lot of times, shouldn't they give you a discount for doing that also? Um, I don't know that off the top of my head. Um, it would be nice. Some places do. Some I don't places, places do. Yeah. 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 Be worth asking. Budget. Uh, plan. No. So, I, I move to pay consumers' power bills via, via ACH. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Nays? Motion carried. I do want to make sure again, anytime something like that comes up, I do have an administrative, administrative procedure now that is uh, better codified to go council. This is something we should discuss. Thank you. So, right. yep. And then so the last one call is the individuals. Yeah, I, I will. I will call. Issue. Yeah, and if they, if you know, a couple of councilors think you know maybe we should um, have a meeting about this, then we'll we'll right. get it out. So, yep. Yeah. Uh, this last one is about city property taxes. Yeah, did you know that we were... Okay, so 2014, we traded properties with uh, Habitat for Humanity. The person who owned them previously didn't pay their last year's property taxes. I guess that didn't come up in Habitat for Humanity's title search. They were given to us. I guess we didn't do a title search at that time, or if we did, uh, it didn't show that there were, um, uh, I don't know, $1,200 worth of taxes or so that hadn't been paid on these properties, and uh, since 2014, the property taxes that are owed with interest uh, have come down to $2,569.82. Mm. And how does that fall on us? I mean, I don't um, understand mm -hmm. that. I mean, if we donated the land, we're no longer responsible for it. Like, say, they did their title search, you know, to make sure it was clean title. Mm -hmm. And so how does that fall on the city? Yeah, it's... Yeah, that it's is something that's title. in the, the county tax department hasn't been really helpful about that. They're just like, and it's yours now. Deal with it. Um, what they're telling us is that they don't have the ability to file a lien on the properties we own to take them from us. Um, but if that wasn't in the way, that probably would happen. And that's kind of the gist of it. So if we do nothing, nothing's going to happen under Except the way the law is currently. Yeah, up, but then it goes up. up. Eventually the legislature could say, you know what? Yeah, cities should be required to pay things like that. Um, so it's it's one of those like. So is that our property then? Yeah. It's, so there's a store, it's the old store building, the red house, and I don't, I don't know what else. And the red house. We yeah we got that in the same yeah. same deal trade, and the piece of property down over down over the up the hill over the hill. I believe we got that from Habitat. I don't know where the fourth one is though. You said there's four. Yeah, we, oh, yeah I, I do have a list of properties from um, from Lynn County, but the. Ultimately, those four properties have been accruing interest on the property taxes. But we own them, not Habitat for Humanity, then. Yeah. That's true. correct. We, we yeah. traded okay. those properties. But title so. should have never cleared with back taxes on it. Yeah. So I don't, I don't want to sit on I don't think this yeah, should exactly. be, oh, well, no. Somebody yeah. screwed up, not us. Yeah, I mean, my recommendation at this point is that the, the, the county tax department doesn't really seem interested in anything other than us giving them a check. 
Um, so I wanted to refer the matter to the city's attorney to call him up and go, okay, you can't ignore me. We're going to figure this out. Yeah. Our, our county, yeah, like I said, I've told you about our county doing a few things that, that uh, yeah, like selling their own county shops for back taxes is twice there, in two years. Is there a way to get a copy of the sales and the title from, I, I don't know when this happened. We've got to have it yeah. somewhere. It happened in 2014. <clears throat> 2014. So, I mean, I can see us paying the back taxes for, you know, that particular year, but, I mean, that nobody's notified us yeah, that, the, you know, there's been any issue. Yeah, at the so very least, we should be paying that out. seven years that of... Office. Yeah, the city administrator should have let the council know. And they, they send these notices to the city every year. But like I said, I mean, we should have, yeah, you know, I mean... Uh, give me a list of the properties, and I'm going to go talk to the land office over in the county courthouse and see what they say about it. Okay. And being yeah, the mayor, I'm sure I can do it, go get some information from them. Yeah, okay. I think so. Like I said, I mean, it just doesn't make any sense how we're responsible for it. I mean, I guess if the city administrator has been notified, I mean, if, yeah. you know, I mean, I guess they just didn't bring it to council. I Which guess. is a But again, how did it start to begin with? How did they choose to the ignore I mean, if you bought or sold a house, you don't get title until all that's taken care of. Yeah. So how did that happen? Yeah. Yeah, I think we need to do a little more investigation before we turn yeah. over and pay them up. But, yep. you know, yeah. I think eventually we're going to have to pay them up, but hopefully yeah. it's not the full yeah, but we yeah. need to find out penalized. Why. Yep. It's, it's not the full the penalized amount yeah. right now. So. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I guess what we can do first, the mayor is going to go to the county courthouse yeah. to give talk to Give him a copy, is it? I don't know, check with it. I mean, I wait until next week sometime, but I'll go over there to the courthouse yeah. and talk to him. Um, what I, I would like uh, is to have the council's authorization to... Uh, refer the matter to the uh, city attorney, attorney uh, but pending there not being a resolution with the mayor's intervention. Yeah, plus um, let's get the research and do some of the work for the attorney because he charges yeah. a lot more exactly. for his research than <laughs> That's what I was anybody does. Yeah. So, Is that what our dunks in a motion to have the mayor? Yeah, so the, the motion would be to uh, refer uh, the matter of property taxes to the city attorney, but the way it's going to be administered is that we're going to do everything in our power to do this first before it goes to him. So it could be that we're able to get that resolved, and um, I won't even contact the legal counsel until we've exhausted everything you know, with uh, the mayor's work over there. Um, so just the clean motion would be to refer the matter to the city's legal counsel and with the council's understanding that it's not going to happen until... Well, like I say, we don't want to get too in-depth into the legal process. At $200 yeah. an hour, I mean, 10 hours is basically Maybe used up what we pay, right? We're so free. we don't want to get him too bogged down. As well, so. No, we don't. So the more we can do ourselves... Yeah. Um, you know, the better, the easier it's going to be to supply him information. The less he's going to have to do. Yeah, they don't like me over there too much anyway. So, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll make the motion and refer this issue to legal counsel from the city of Sodaville after we research to the best of our ability to hand it to the legal counsel. Maybe absent resolution by what we do. I mean, because if we fix it, it don't need to go to the attorney. Right. Yeah. If Roger can go and. Absent a resolution to the situation. That would be what we call a, a friendly amendment. Do you accept the friendly amendment? Yeah. Friendly. Okay, good. Uh, is there a second? Somebody. I'll second the friendly amendment. I'm in favor. Aye. 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 As long as it's quick, phone call, I'm good with that. Yeah. Runs in any legal fees? More than that, not any of that. Pay it, move on. You need a quick phone call expensive. Well, two hundred bucks. That's what I'm saying. If yeah. you get ten hours involved, get his time involved. You double your money. You might as well just what? pay the damn. Exactly. exactly. That's, yeah. that's, that's my thought. So, quick call if you can get it resolved. If not, no more legal action. We'll just pay it and get out from under it. Mm -hmm. And ask why it happened in the first place. Yes. Because yeah. that should not happen. I mean, I, can can I, see I think us before we the roll original. over, I'd like to go back to the title company. <coughs> and ask why title was cleared if they were pending that be I, 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 I can our council. What's our the, you know, resources to the, the, the title company? Yeah. Yeah. Part yeah. of our legal yeah. advice. One of, two, one of the offices, the other one, either tax office or the land office, either one. Right. Should be able to get the. I should uh, be getting information from either one of them for title the company of record. Mm -hmm. Is that right? And then we back to email correspondence. But, with have the we city. even got a deed for those properties in our possessions? Have we got a deed to the truck? <laughs> I have the truck, yeah. 
That's what I'm saying. You know. A broke down piece of junk. Huh. It's it running. I'm good. Had it running for months. Roger's got it going. Yeah. Got a light on him. Yeah, I have I have my original Some JavaScript from 1880. I don't have a deed to the properties we own. So, yeah. I said I, I have a, a copy of the city courthouse job prescription from 1880. I don't have a copy of the, the deeds to our properties. <laughs> so, it's a hot yeah. to be taxed on it. We don't have any. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Anyways, yeah. on to the next. Mm -hmm. Yes. JD, it's time to shine. All right. As you can <laughs> see from my report, the numbers look better for our water. We had basically a 6.8% loss. Um, the standard goal for water systems is less than 9%. Ooh. So we're doing so, pretty good. Yeah. Right on. That's um, a huge improvement. Next thing was I've been learning the new system, or Alex and I, we've been learning the new system. Um, right here is a printout you guys have. Um, public, you're welcome to come look at this after the meeting. This is a gentleman or a family that I shut their water off today. The little highlighted pink stuff, that's when the system, the meter goes into alarm. Um, I did not read it at the first alarm signal, but I did it the second, third, and fourth. Um, the first one that I caught was Monday, and I went and talked to the family let them know that there was a potential leak. Tuesday, it binged me again, so I went and tried to talk to them. Nobody answered, so I left a voicemail saying, you guys are looking to have a serious problem. Wednesday, I door tagged them, said, oh, we're gonna shut your water off tomorrow noon. I gave 24 hour notice. We really don't have a policy for how to handle this situation, so I need to look at creating or developing a procedure and policy for this. But I went today, when I went to lock it, to shut off the water, I met with the gentleman, walked him over to his meter box, showed him what was going on, educated him a little bit, and we shut his water off to his house. Monday he used to have a plumber come out and he has a toilet issue. I'm not sure that the, that's the issue totally, but that's part of it. Below in the highlighted yellow, and on the back of the page are the daily uses, uh -huh. the gallons that they use each day of the. So that's what our meters are giving me. Yay. So all that information is on the meter, but when I read it, I don't get all that unless I actually go out to that individual meter. I do get the flag to say, hey, something's going on here. And I do get the usage between my readings. So. Well, if so he awesome. gets that taken care of, we're going to be down to 4%. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I have reached out to Buckmaster Plumbing to look at the six meters that did not get changed out. They came out, they looked to see what was needed to fix those, and they were going to give us a bid. I'm still waiting on that. They're working with Ferguson to see if they can get the parts needed because of how our supply system is. Um, also with the parks, I reached out to a couple different tree services. I think I spoke last month about the one that gave us a super high bid and from trimming trees and getting rid of some of the dead stuff so it didn't fall on people. And Griffin Tree Service gave me a bid of well over a thousand dollars less than the other company. So I accepted their bid and he will be here soon to take care of that stuff. Um, for the streets, you know, um, the village, the streets down in the village, Park, Fisher, Maple Rock are getting horrible. So I'm going to be looking at next month in a new fiscal season, um, reaching out to the county to see what we can do to get their greater schedule. Find out where we can find some rock. Some of those holes, I right? can't even grade over. We got to put some rock yeah. in some of those. Yeah. Can't they're, even... They've gotten really bad with the big storms recently. Yeah. Uh, I've been um, down there a few times looking at water system with you and all the macrolets rough down there. Yeah. Yeah, after last weekend, um, it was significant. Yeah. I noticed that recently. Yeah. Um, 
There was some stuff added to my report that I didn't find out about till tonight. So okay. that's my my apologies. <laughs> there was uh, some requests from uh, council and uh, me. It says staff is mostly me trying to make sure we're we're talking about stuff uh, to make sure that we have uh, some clarification about the administrative right. procedures for handling water calls. So I will apologize profusely no, to it's our all good. stellar it's all public good. works director for not giving a better <laughs> heads up about that. Um, I know there, there had been some kind of back and forth over the last few months that hadn't been really like collected and coordinated. It's so. all new. We're working through it. Exactly. So, first, before we get on to this part, are there any questions about the other stuff that I just covered? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, on this part, council and staff seek clarification about administrative procedures for handling water calls when staff are out of the office. Staff should clarify to counselors when all call, on call time begins and ends. The only thing I can say is when I leave for my weekend, <coughs> I leave the phone and the keys here, and when I come in Monday morning, I pick them up, or whatever day I come in. If Monday's a holiday, I wouldn't come in until Tuesday. Um, I, I don't see it being realistic for me to take them home. Thursday night and then come back two or three hours later Thursday night to drop them off or come in two hours earlier on Monday to pick them up. I agree with that. Yeah, and I, I can say I can take the phone home on Thursdays because Thursday is your last day. I can take it home. I can have that through Tuesday. Um, it last uh, last Thursday when it was uh, Councilor Lewis's turn, um, I had uh, his wife come pick it up for me so that she had it available. Um, when I was done, so um, I can plan on, um, if you want, I can plan on being the guy who drops it off at somebody's place, um, or you can come to the office, we can leave it here for you to pick up, um, you just, every person probably just let me know their preference for how that gets delivered so that um, JD gets the time off that he's earned. So you're going to basically take it Thursday <coughs> and Friday during days, and then at the end of your day, whoever's on call takes it. And is there a central place for us to know when people's schedules change? Um, like, and everybody needs all the time that they need off to do whatever they do. I, I'm a proponent of that. But if something changes and the expectation, I mean, we don't always know that, you know, somebody's going to be off for health care or somebody's going to, is there a way to know so we can plug in and do coverage with that? Because I don't, I mean, I don't, think, have we, I don't think we have a schedule, right? We have a schedule for when people are going to be, um, using it? The, uh, no, schedule for um, like you and JD. Yeah, oh, yeah. So, like, staying, letting you know which, what times mm -hmm. people are doing things. Um, we need to look at maybe having some sort of city council, or not council, but city ma bleh, but calendar bleh, bleh, bleh. <laughs> that's, that we all have access to. Yeah, would you all be okay with like having a Google Calendar? I know the mayor doesn't uh, use online services as much, but no. would you all benefit from the use of that? Can you tuck it in with yeah, your, be... your database? Yeah. But I was thinking with the new meters, I thought that was just, you know, you didn't need to check that stuff. Right? You know, so you it's know. just emergency but calls, we're gonna get right? there too. Yeah. 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 Basically, yeah. it's when the phone rings, answer. You got an emergency call, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. And if it doesn't yeah. ring, don't worry about it. Yeah, so. right. Yeah, it's not like you have to go out and check the wells and check the water, but somebody has to have the phone. Yeah, right. for so that Yahoo, if so, his private meter or valve breaks off, you can shut it off for him. So. Yeah. Right? Yep. So next is counselors need clarification as whether they are covering email requests. No, absolutely not. Please don't go into the emails. Yeah, leave that alone. Requests are only... Phone calls and texts. Phone calls, definitely. This phone number was used by somebody in California or Texas before we got the number, and she quite frequently gets calls and text messages. Look at the text message. If it's nothing, clear it. If it's something, then you can, and it needs addressed, you can address it. If it doesn't necessarily need addressed, then it can wait. Um, my biggest thing is please don't mess with the email side of it. Um, I don't mess with no need to. <laughs> answer answer phone, phone calls, calls basically. Yeah. Correct. Most customers, if they have some problem, they're not going to text you for it. Right. They're going to call. Um, 
and you the re way I answer the phone, Public Works, JD, so the City of Soderville, Public Works, JD, something to that effect. And most people, oh, sorry, wrong number, because they're it's still registered to her. Right. I mean, her vet text messaged me a couple times yesterday. So. <laughs> Yeah, and it was Courtney Love. That's what rings up on the caller ID when he gets the office. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I didn't change. know that. Yep. Change profession, right? <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know how we look at changing that. Yeah, so, you any questions that. on that? Yeah. Okay. Counselors need additional info about the information provided by the new water meters and, and how to handle the different alerts. Um, Do we? I mean, I, well, there, there were a couple people who had asked, uh, maybe, because some people didn't know everything there, but I wanted to put there in case some of us needed. Because you found out when I was on call that first, you likely meant that the, the leak was on their side, not our side. All of the... So do we have any other... There's or? burst, there's leak, there's flow. You have to look at the meter to see these. Um... Burp, flow just means the water's moving. Um, the leak and burst indicate that there is a, sudden I don't remember surge. the gallons, but yeah, sudden surge basically. And if that goes away, great. If not, I don't remember what the one was that you had. It was a burst, it was but burst. I don't remember. They found Roger it on their water. meter or something and called you? They found no water in the house. Okay. They went to take a shower and there was no water in the house. Mm -hmm. And that was uh, down here at um, Waterstrasse's, Ken Waterstrasse's rental. Mm -hmm. And Ken Waterstrasse said, well, even though the water, water line's broke, it should get water into the house somewhere. Well, no, if that water line's sheared here in half, I said, take a straw, put it in your mouth, put it in your mouth and try blowing through the straw with your finger on the end of it and see yeah. if water was in it. No, mm -hmm. it won't. But yeah, four straws was supposed to it, but now that it should still have water somewhere. Even that line is broken off right next to the meter. He we never did find it. I went down there for Dana. I helped Ken put a straw to dig about two. He kept saying there's a shutoff right next to the meter, so I helped him dig back about two feet, found nothing. But it might be over here, it might be over there. I said, okay, I'm done. It's your problem. And blessings on your forehead yeah. for that. But I did try to help him because, you know, he's 90 years old or better. So, I mean, I was trying to help him best we could in a pouring down rainstorm. I shut the meter off and told him to let me know when he wanted to back, turn back on after the plumber got there. And he said, well, I don't know how to do that. I still got a tool for that because he was married one time. So, he heard no more about from him. I don't know what happened with it. And these meters are plastic. And our valve is on the input side of the meter. So, if you shut the valve, please go gently on and off. Yeah. Um, if it's tight, hang, valve, on, hang on to the meter first. Yeah, <laughs> their valves on the output side, they should have a valve, they should have a backflow device, they should have a pressure reducer, on, especially down in the lower areas. Um, mm -hmm. Most of that stuff's not in the box, unfortunately. No, no. It's good to know. Or they have a second box that a lot yeah. of that's in. Anything after our valve is, is the property. customer's property. Or yeah, yeah. property. The yeah. customer's responsibility. Right, thank you. <laughs> Yeah. So if there is an issue? If it's ahead of the meter, it's our problem. If yeah. it's on the other side of the meter, it's their problem. Yes. I went down there and now you could hear that water hit down that meter, so I just shut it off. And yeah. It quit. It always quit. So. And then it's on them. Yeah. And, it's, 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 and it's not our responsibility. No. So. No. But, but like I said, I helped him dig a little bit. And I figured, you know, now, if I help him fix this thing, City might be liable for, for you know, something else goes wrong. So yeah. I just <laughs> helped him a little bit to find it. Couldn't find it. It's okay. It's your problem. Shut the water off and say yep. public works will be in Monday to deal with you. Yeah. I'll come help you out. If it's on their side. They're going to need most likely call a plumber. Cause, but. Yeah. I mean, he had a pile of rocks on, on the line going towards the house. He had big old concrete blocks there. And, and shrubby this tall alongside the house there. No, the line goes out here through here somewhere. So that faucet back over behind that gate around that fence and the back side of the house. This is that's your problem. <laughs> Chain link fence between me and where the, where the valve was. Stephen checked to see if there's any water in the valve. And I said, No, I'm not dealing with it. No gate. I have to walk here around the house. So next one. The counselors need latitude to address water calls based on their skill set. If one counselor is unable to visit a house themselves, they need to know 
if another counselor can address the issue, if the public works director needs to be contacted, or if the Brownsville Public Works Department must be contacted. My, my main thought there is it is so much better for whoever's on call to reach out to another council person if they're not comfortable turning the valve on or off than to call me in. You're welcome to call me to ask me how to do something, how to help walk you and talk you through it. it in my mind, for something that small, it is a waste of city resources and funds to call me in to pay me a hundred dollars to just come and do a three second job. Right. And you're even going to pay more to call Brownsville in. Yeah. So where this is based, and I'll throw myself under the bus on this, from the very beginning we were talking about call, I said, I'm not going to go on site. I'm not going to go check mm -hmm. out meters. I'm, I, that, that's just not, I, I, You're not comfortable doing No, that. I'm not. Okay. I'm not. I'm comfortable, and you guys can decide whether you want me to do this or not, to basically be call service. I'll carry the phone. I'll take the call, and if they say, my water's off, well, you got it turned off because it's so-and-so you're going to call. But I am not comfortable going to somebody's house to go in to look at their meter. The one person took a picture of their meter to send it so I could send it to JD. So I need to know, and I guess I have calls coming up on the 24th or 25th, what do you expect? I'm the counselor and the staff needs to know. What do you want me to do? Call the rest of us. Yep. Yeah, call yep. Just us. get a hold of us. And, yeah. Uh, yes. Like I say, I'm usually around most time. I'm going to spot meets and car shows every now and then, but I'm usually close by. So. And what they, if? The rest of these guys all work and stuff, so. What if somebody's first. not available? Huh? Call the next. Yeah. And, I mean, it could conceivably be that you're out playing with your stuff. I don't know what your hobby is. I know you're at the <laughs> Ren Fair. You're off riding your bike. Um, so in that in that we'll case, make... the next line of defense can be you can call me and I will have JD walk me through what needs okay. to be done. Or go over yeah. what the advice of your other council members are. Yeah. Yeah. If you get down on the end of the list, say, hey, nobody's available. What do I do? We'll find. We'll call Joe Parsons. I was gonna say, Joe, so like, uh, turn the damn thing off. <laughs> exactly. Is there uh, any way? Um, would that be a city <laughs> resident could help? Yeah, he's like a, a, a city budget committee member. Because <laughs> I've turned my off more than a few times. <laughs> so, right. So okay. just reach out to other council members. If none of us are available, then we'll give you suggestions or we'll make calls. I mean, I. Pick up the phone and yeah. call Joe, or yeah. call one of my boys, or call and it, Brian. It's yeah, unfortunate that it happened to you. It doesn't happen very often. <laughs> so next <laughs> weekend when you're on call, you'll get three of them. <laughs> well, <laughs> my, call, sure. my call was supposed to start on, thir on Friday, but it started Wednesday night because people were off on Thursday. And then it was rain like a dog, and then we had the holiday on Monday. So I'm like, holy moly, I've got like five and a half days of call and something happened. I don't know how to do that. And it's raining. Like, I just want to make sure that. Don't you have a raincoat? <laughs> you know, my girlfriend told me about the there's rain. There's rain gear up at the compound. <laughs> I'm mind. infested with pill bugs too. <laughs> so, that's all I have. If there's okay. any other questions, yeah. I'm good with everything. I think you yeah. get your answers. Yep. Yeah. Your questions. <laughs> yep. Like I yep. said, like, like I told her, she'd call me anytime. Yeah. And I'll go off. I've got, I've got my time to show me anywhere I go. So who has it this week? Huh? Mayor. Oh, yeah, we okay. need a tool. It's Father's Day Sunday. I, 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 when I went to grow, I did grab the crest wrench out of my, out of my oh, shop and use that and shut it off. Yeah. Juneteenth. I do want to. I do want to get some more tools. You know, uh, I can make it up. Oh, oh, so Juneteenth. It's a new holiday. Original? It's a new state holiday too. Yeah. Yeah. When they ended Sorry. slavery. Crest wrenches. I was go. The crest wrench. I'm down to most of my actually hang on to the meter. Because we originally talked about it. Because you all over. We're all new meters tonight. Yeah. We have 47 <laughs> conversations. Okay. Yeah. yeah uh, somebody just mentioned Juneteenth. That is a new holiday. This year it falls on a weekend, so I'm planning on coming to work on Monday instead of taking an extra day off. Okay. Thank you. I won't break on Juneteenth. Yeah. Next year. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Move on. Yes. All right. Uh, so next up is the budget. So there's a script for our uh, Eastern Day. Okay, now let me see what I got to do here. <laughs> city of Sotomayor, Council, City, City Council of the City of Sotomayor funds 
that adopting the budget and making appropriations is necessary under... Oh, order. sorry. No, that's not it. Oh, that's not it? <laughs> no, that's, okay. the, that's what we're going to be passing. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That's the one. On that one over there. MD. Okay. You had this on top, so I misunderstood it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Open the public... I'm opening a public hearing. I will now... No. Open a public hearing to consider the budget for the... 22-23 fiscal year. The same will be conducted as follows. I will make an opening statement and set any ground rules. This will be followed by disclosure of ex parte contact or conflict of interest on the part of any council member. Public testimony will be given by others in support and finally those who are opposed council may make any questions May I ask any questions to the speaker at any point of the hearing? The public will have an opportunity to ask questions during the public testimony. Let's keep on going. Yeah. Set ground rules. When testifying, please give your name, address for, for the record. For those of for you testifying, please give testimony related to the ap application and be as concise as possible. Although this is not necessary, most hearings may ask you to limit your testimony to more, no more than five minutes. Does any member of the audience have any objection to the Budget Committee's jurisdiction in this matter? No. Yeah. Or the City Council? Uh, yeah. yeah. What? Keep going. Sorry. Does any member of the Budget Committee have any conflict of interest with regards to this, to this request? No, you guys answer now. Uh, that would be Council Jack. Yeah. yeah, I have to abstain from all that. Does the city recorder Alex McCadden they can answer any questions? Okay. All right. So I don't have a lot of stuff to add. I think we had a pretty uh, sufficient uh, budget committee meeting to get questions answered. There is one key thing you have here today, and that is an updated uh, budget resolution 2206. Um, I passed it down. So that is a, a separate handout that you all received. So it's not in the stapled part. It's that one. Oh. All right. Yeah. So one of the things I've been doing uh, recently, now that ordinances are all digitized, I've been going over our resolutions, which are far more numerous because they cover a lot more city business uh, rather than, they're more action items rather than making rules and things like that. And I found that uh, since 2011, the city has not passed a budget that was fully compliant given the prevalence of typos in all of them aren't just um, to do with punctuation. There are actually a lot of financial typos that have been passed. Um, so with this updated uh, Resolution 2206 uh, you have here today, it will be the first budget we have passed in the last 10 years without any typo that have financial impacts. Any, any screw-ups? <coughs> yes. So uh, I can identify one if you would like for the this current fiscal year when, uh, when we got to this resolution, when it was written, uh, it said that the city will levy property taxes for the... Uh, 2019 for the 2019 no it was for the 2020 to 2021 fiscal year which means that we didn't actually pass a resolution that says we can levy property taxes during the 21 to 22 fiscal year so that has been updated to make sure that we're levying taxes for the correct fiscal year the budget amounts have all been corrected so that is uh that is what that is about so the three resolutions are resolution 2205 that is a s simple summary of this the city's budget 2206 has more details about what is in the city's budget and the taxes that are being levied. 2207 is about uh, declaring the city's election to receive state revenue. Um, so we put that money in the general fund, and it is used for uh, four of the uh, eight acceptable uh, services we use. Usually that's... Um, make sure to pull that one up. For Streets, you. water, public safety, um, yeah. Yeah, uh, for, for a few years in the last decade, we were putting uh, uh, firefighting on there. Oh. Yeah, I don't know how that got in, but uh, the city has claimed uh, several times in the last decade that we are uh, have, operating a fire department. Fire truck. Well, maybe, maybe they put that in there because we had fire hydrants on the city, even though we can't use water in the fire season because you've got no water or tanks to use them. But, yeah. Uh, so the, the most recent one was street construction, storm sewers, planning, and uh, water utility. Now, the reason we're going to have to have a special meeting next week is... Once upon a time, the state just emailed the final resolution where we indicate which services we offer to every city, and we just got it. They're no longer doing that. Uh, this year, 
we have to fill out a survey after we pass the resolution saying we elect to receive the state revenues. We have to give them a copy, and then they will send us the next resolution that says, here are the services we provide. So that is why we have to do this, because um, I think, let me see if I can find the exact language that uh, they used here. Yeah, I'm mad too. It's kind of upside down and backwards. <clears throat> Job security. Exactly. Yep. The quote was, oh, he said this process that I described literally said it is more efficient than having emails sent to individual cities. So that is the, the state's opinion right now is that uh, instead of just giving it to us, we have to have several meetings hmm. to get it. Efficient for who? And that is what the state's opinion is. So. Yeah, so tonight we're going to be approving... Uh, resolutions 2205, 2206, and 2207. And, yeah. We still have the hearing going on, though, right? Yeah. So that's, that's just what I'm, I'm describing. The, the passage of the budget will involve a counselor moving to approve these three resolutions as presented tonight. Okay. So, yeah, that's all I have to say. Anything else? Any questions? No. Okay, so where am I at now? <laughs> <laughs> I guess if there's no questions or comments, it's time to close the hearing, correct? I'll just keep reading on the script. Okay, figure out which one is here again. Okay, public testimony. That's where I'm at. Yep. All people wishing to testify, please remember to give your name and address for the recorder. Do any other people wish to testify for or against adopting resolution 2205, 2206, or 2207? No. Okay, backside, okay. Does anyone wish to testify in rebuttal of any testimony that has been, get, been offered? Okay, no. no answers. I close this public hearing. Discussion. Discussion. Just, just, I don't know what that word is there, but decision, I guess. Discussion. Oh, yeah, decision. So. Yeah, if there's any discussion, we can have the counselors uh, can ask additional questions and I can answer them. I guess there's no discussion. I guess the one question about the fire department that you're saying, is it because we got to have a certain amount of services to be able to receive? Yeah, so you do have to have at least four on a list of eight, and fire sure. was one that was put there. Yes, counselor. And what are our four now? Um, so I'm just going to use the ones we had last year. Let me find that list. Um, the ones we have used for the last few years are street construction, maintenance and lighting, storm sewers, planning, zoning, and subdivision control, and water utility. That one's basically a make one up. Well, not make one up. Just <laughs> write down what it is, and they usually accept water utility. So. Okay. So it's all covered then. I mean, we're, yeah, we're yeah, still we're, covered, we're covered to accept the resolutions, to accept yep. the, the resources. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. They actually did years ago try to get the fire department to put a substation out here. Mm -hmm. That might be why that's in there. That'd be about right 10, 11 years ago. They're still thinking about it, I so. heard. No, Alex, I was just curious. Okay. Yeah, okay, 2009, sure we, we put fire protection on the list. For right, and I think that's probably about the time yeah. that they were discussing trying to put a fire station out here. So the only that? question I had. Okay. Before we close it, before I close it, okay, council members. Before I close it, continue this public hearing. Is there any additional questions from council members or staff or any of that have test has testified once the hearing has been closed, only council members or staff may speak. Hearing none, uh, public testimony is now over. The public hearing is now closed. The city council shall now discuss the resolution to make a decision. Anybody got any questions? Mm -hmm. I move we approve nope, less. Can't. Okay. Why? Oh, I can't do it, can I? Yeah. <clears throat> I, got, I have to abstain from all this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Bad near the, the bottom of the page, the penultimate section says suggested motion. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I move to approve resolutions 2205, 2206, and 2207. I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. Aye. No. Any days? No. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Motion carries. Motion carries. That's the name of that one.
Okay, the next one up is uh, 10C Ordinance 2202, Amending City Water Ordinances. So we're going to be amending a lot of these. This is kind of a start. There are two water ordinances that I think need to be amended. Uh, first off, the, um, the City Water Connection Ordinance says that uh, we have to deposit all funds into um, the Water Enterprise Program. Uh, and uh, we don't have that. We have to put it in the Water Enterprise Fund. We're abolishing that for this next year, so we just need to take that out. And then the other um, amendment um, is to um, Ordinance 8208. Uh, right now, we say currently have an ordinance that we're only allowed to accept cash payments at a bank that no longer exists. So I'll, we just delete that part about that bank, and we just say cash payments may also be made, and that simplifies it. Right. So, so those are the two ordinances that would be yeah, amended. That for <laughs> Sorry, Al. So good. Was that okay? I'm, I'm, which one are we looking at now? All right. Uh, so this will be you're opening up a public hearing for the ordinance. You'll be using that script several times. Mm-hmm. Lack thereof. Brains. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. I will now open a public hearing to consider the ordinance. The hearing will be conducted as follows. I will make an opening statement to set the ground rules. This will be followed by the disclosure of ex parte contact or conflict of interest. On the, part, on the part of council members, city recorder Alex Mahadden will be presenting ordinance. Council members may ask questions of the speaker at any point. The hearing, in point of the hearing, the public will have an opportunity to ask questions during the public testimony. Setting ground rules. When testifying, please give your name, address, and address the record. For those of you testifying, please give testimony related to them. This app, the application and to be concise as possible. Although this is not necessary in most hearings, we may ask that you limit your testimony to more, no more than five minutes. Does any member of the audience have any objections to the city council jurisdiction this matter? No. No. Does any member of the city council have any conflict of interest with regards to the, this request? If so, indicate the nature of your conflict of interest and leave the t council table if necessary. Uh, that would be Councilor Jackman. He's going to be a recipient of funds uh, received uh, through this, so I think you should probably abstain for this one. Okay. Has any, council, has any council member been had pre-hearing contact with any party involved in this case, either for or against the proposal? If so, please explain your pre-hearing contact. I know I described, I, I talked with Councillor Adina about this uh, a few different times, so she was made aware of it, and I believe I talked to the mayor a couple times about it. Um, I don't think I said whether or not they should be voting for it, no. just I said this is what's going Give to be in here. Street. So, Okay. Staff report. I will have Alex McHadden, McHadden, the city recorder, read the ordinance in its entirety unless someone in, on the council would like to make a motion to have it. Read by title only, the city recorder has filled the, the charter requirements for the ordinance to be read by title only. Do we do that now? Uh, I will go ahead and give the staff report first, and then um, after that, if you're all fine, we can have a motion to uh, approve it by title only. So uh, first off is that, again, we are amending ordinances 1701 and 8208. 1701 is our fee ordinance, and that is being amended to say we're putting... Uh, our, our water money into the water enterprise program in the general fund, and then 8202 is uh, the one we're getting rid of that bank that no longer exists. So that's that. What ordinance is it? Uh, so that is. Uh, 1701. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. 208. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that very the same thing. It's like I was going to say, because it looks like it's ordinance 2202. Yeah, ordinance 2202 yeah. amends two different ordinances. So. Okay. All right. So, can you explain this a little bit? Yeah, so the, the city council um, has 
Ordinances are the, the big things just below the charter. Mm -hmm. So unless the charter requires an amendment to an ordinance, the only thing that can amend an ordinance is another ordinance. So you can adopt a resolution that passes an ordinance. We're just going to vote on an ordinance because that's how it's usually done uh, in the city's history. You can do a resolution to adopt an ordinance, um, but it seems like in the past that hasn't been the way the council does it. They just like to say we're going to adopt an ordinance. And so it's basically an amendment to 1701 then. Yeah. Okay. And, and the way the number, this is what also got me, is we have 82, we have 2202, 1701. So what year was 17? Yeah, so you talked yeah, about was... how they used to be numbered, right? <clears throat> yeah, uh, we're, later we're going to amend ordinance number 10. Want to guess which year number 10 passed? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so 1910. Also, words, what you're doing is you're taking some words out and putting other words in. Yes. We're kind of okay. bringing things okay. up to date. Right, okay. And not okay. depositing to a bank that no longer exists. Right. And having to make the deposits for the water service in cash. They don't have to be in cash. So, okay. well, and the other thing uh, well, is... So, uh, please keep reading the script. Uh, make sure yeah. everybody can get public comment. Okay. okay. Um, I already said it. I'll ask it. Ask it. Okay. I'd like to have had the city quarter of ordinance... It, in his entirety, unless it, okay, the act of having the city recorder will present the ordinance. Does anyone on the council or staff have any questions? And we just went to questions. Yeah, we are. Jump the head, sorry. Okay. Oops. All people wish to testify this, on the behalf of this ordinance will now testify. Remember to give your name and address for the record. Does any council members or any staff have any questions? All people wish to testify in opposition of the ordinance will, te will, not, will now testify. Please give your name and address. Address for the record. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, I, Peggy Bishop, 3085 Spring Street. Uh, I asked my question that those, that actually what we were doing was for you to clarify that we are changing words to bring them up to date. Yep. Thank you very much. Um, Joseph Parsons, 38136 Maple Street. Um, I'm just wanting to understand, so we're pretty much are eliminating 1701 and 8208, and they will now become 22-02. Oh, gotcha. So uh, we are amending these existing ordinances. So what I will go okay. back and do is find, we will go to, to go to the city ordinance website, which we now have, and we will update those to have the amendments the council is adopting. There will be notes on that page about these ordinances were amended um, at the other such and such council meeting. There is a, a problem I highlighted in the past that all of our ordinances are grouped by the year they were passed rather than by subject, so that'll be fixed in the future. Okay, so 2202 is just a subsection of amending these two, yeah. and this is just the ordinance saying, okay. Yep. So those stay as is amended. This is just, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Will the numbers 22 be anywhere on there? So 2202 will be put on the city website. Just say this is what amendment, or this is what ordinance 2202 is. Mm -hmm. And then when somebody goes to read 1701, there will be a footnote on the bottom that says ordinance 2202 amended it to say X, Y, and Z. Okay. Okay. Do, do any council members or staff have any questions? Do any people who test testify? Do they, does anyone wish to testify in rebuttal of the testimony that has been offered? Mm -hmm. Okay, I will now move to close the public hearing. This discussion, this, this decision. Okay. Want to keep reading? Huh? Well, I think I'll keep reading on that one. Okay. Before I close or continue the public hearing, are there any additional questions from council members or of staff or anyone that has testified? Once the hearing has been closed, only council members or staff may speak. No. Hearing none, public testimony is now over. The public hearing is now closed. The City Council shall now discuss the ordinance to make a decision, its decision. Yeah, that's good. So. Is this where we move to approve or we move to not have you have to read the whole thing? Uh, somebody page, will. Word? Yeah, so the motion would be. Uh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, the motion is to uh, uh, read the ordinance by title only and adopt. Is that what you need? Yeah, from somebody other than you. 
I make a motion that we uh, read by title only on ordinance amendment 2202. It's amending the water ordinance, city water ordinance. Do I second on that? Second. Um, favor. Oh, I will read no. the ordinance by title now. Okay. Ordinance 2202, amending city water ordinances. Okay. That's it? And then, yeah, then we, we vote. vote. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, we had a motion, we had, we had a seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 No. Any nays? No. Motion carries. <clears throat> all right. And then we have to do it all again for the next one. Oh, good. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, so the next one is Ordinance 2203, so you'll just start over on that same script again. The same script again? Yep. Or record it. <laughs> oh, I thought I already put that away once. Okay. Opening, open, uh, I will now open public hearing to consider the, the ordinance. The hearing will be conducted as follows. I will make an opening st statement and set any ground rules. This may be followed by disclosure of ex parte contact or a conflict interest. On the part of council members, city recorder Alex Manhattan will be present. We present the ordinance. Council members may ask questions of the speaker at any point of the hearing. The hearing will have public will have opportunity to ask questions during the public testimony. Setting ground rules. When testifying, please give your name, address, and address of the record. For those of you testifying, please give testimony related to the application and be as concise as possible. Although it is not necessary in most hearings, we may ask you to limit your testimony to no more than five minutes. Does any member of the audience have any objections to the City Council's jurisdiction this matter? Does any member of the City Council have any conflict of interest with regards to the request? If so, please indicate the nature of the conflict and the of interest and leave the Council table if it's necessary. Okay. Think, keep going. Yeah. <laughs> has any has any council member had pre hearing con contact with any, any party involved in this in this case, either for for or against the proposal? If so, please explain your pre hearing contact. Uh, I can disclose that I, I did talk with Council President Adina Oliveras about one of the ordinances, or one provision of the ordinance that we are going to look at repealing tonight. Um, this is something that I said I wanted to put on here because I think it needs to be repealed. Um, yeah, that's why I was on here. Uh, but this uh, communication took place uh, several weeks before this was even assembled as an agenda item. So uh, there was no no knowledge of when it would be um, put down, I believe. So that is the only one that I had talked with a counselor about. Okay. I'll have Alex McHadden, the city recorder, read the ordinance in its entirety unless some, someone on the council would like to make a motion to have, the, have it read for title only. The city recorder has fulfilled the, the charter requ requirements for the ordinance to be read by title only. Alex McHadden, city recorder, will present the ordinance. Okay. So this is ordinance number 10, it was passed in 1954. We uh, numbered, we, the ordinances were put together just by the number and sequence up until 1980. I think ordinance 55 was the last one passed in 1980 before finally we've passed resolution 1981, uh, which was the first time we started group, you know, identifying them by their year. So it's gonna sound confusing, but this is the uh, ordinance 2203 to amend ordinance number 10. So, uh, Ordinance Number 10 was established as the city's local criminal code in 1954. There are a number of things that have changed since then. The big thing that needs to be changed immediately is that we passed our nuisance ordinance, and that actually uh, covers several things that are in uh, Ordinance Number 10. So, when our ordinance, um, our nuisance ordinances were updated, it should have included an amendment to Ordinance Number 10, but that didn't happen. Uh, so, almost all of these in here are. Um, sections that need to be repealed because we have modern ordinances that supersede them. Uh, the other one uh, that I wanted to put on here was um, Section 11. So Section 11 criminalizes offenses against what is called a public moral. So in legal theory, a public moral is about whatever people kind of feel is wrong at the time. In the 1950s, that would apply to women wearing pants in public. 
Um, so, <laughs> public, yeah, I know. Public <laughs> morals is a really... It, it puts lawmaking, uh, it takes lawmaking out of the hands of the people's elected representatives. When you just say, well, everybody feels this is wrong. Well, there should be a process where elected representatives come together and say, okay, here's what we're going to say is actually wrong, rather than just, again, 1950s public morals where women were in pants. They were yeah. still hanging people in the town yeah. square, right? They're yeah. Not handcuffing the well folks. Well, yeah. <laughs> Exactly. So that was the big reason I wanted to uh, get that on there. Uh, the other part of Section 11 just being uh, you know, not really a reflection of how societies enforce laws today is that it's actually riddled with typos. So even if uh, it's just difficult to enforce in that most. So everything on here except for the, uh, uh, the repeal of Section 11 is uh, about the public nuisance. Uh, and then Section 11 is about eliminating offenses against public morals, which again are vaguely defined and have more to do with uh, social opinions rather than actual laws. Probably so you're wanting to move public... Sorry, go Dina. No, go ahead. So you're wanting to move the public and nuisance um, <coughs> to 10, is that what you're saying? So there are still a number... So this, I, I imagine that once I do that full review of all of our ordinances and figure out what needs to stay and go, Probably all of that will need to be just mm -hmm. abolished, but these are the things that I identified that have been superseded by more recent ordinances that need to be changed immediately and should have been changed several times in the past but weren't. As the new ordinance was brought into effect, the old one was not affected. Yeah, so we have, we have uh, re this is a list of redundant defenses. So or overlapping. Stuff. Yeah. Conflicting. Yes. Yeah, oh, and the other one I forgot uh, is the one that wasn't updated was... Um, we do have in section, in uh, ordinance number 10, outlaws concealed carrying in the whole of the city of Soderville. Now, uh, since then, you know, the jurisprudence has established that the cities can't just ban open carry laws or, or concealed carrying, or again, state law requires people to get a permit but allows them to once they have a permit. So that law was really not in effect up until the beginning of this year when um, a, a law that was passed by the legislature in 2021 actually gave cities the right to restrict carrying firearms on city-owned properties. So that ordinance was, it was out of effect up until January of this year, where now the city does have an ordinance on the books that can be enforced as a result of an action taken by the legislature last year to uh, you know, call the cops and say, hey, somebody's concealed carrying at the park or on city hall property. So uh, the council had passed a Second Amendment preservation ordinance in 2019, which is why I added this year, because it seems in line with where the council is uh, feeling about uh, gun policy. So, Yes, agreed. Yeah. Okay. Does, does anyone have, on the council or staff have any questions? You want to answer that already? I don't know if I fully understand it, but... No? I would well, you're ready. Now, all people wish to testify on behalf of the ordinance will now testify a member to give you a name and address for the recording. Thank you, Bishop. Frank Street, 3085. So what you're saying is the ordinance you're asking for is that it is okay to carry openly on city property. Um, the the current ordinance in place is that it's uh, it's not allowed to concealed carry. So repealing this section of ordinance number ten would remove this council's prohibition on concealed carrying. Open carry is still permitted. Okay. <clears throat> so you can still carry in here. Yeah. Okay. I'm doing it right now. I know. It's a good thing that several people would be using the paper. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, yeah. The, well, I just wanted to make sure. We'd have to go out in the middle of the street. Yeah. 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 Okay. Going on. Thank you. Do any council members or staff have any questions? All people wishing to testify in opposition to this ordinance will now testify. Please give your name and address for the recording. Do any council members or staff have any questions? Do any of the people wish to testify? Well, Did my th my thought on this is that, you know, personally, I don't fully understand it. <laughs> um, what we're trying to pass on this. I really don't. Okay. Um, I would like to table it until, you know, maybe next next meeting so that we can get a better understanding unless everybody else has a better understanding of what this ordinance that we're getting ready to admin. 
Yeah, somebody well, can explain it to me? This ordinance is going and repealing previous ordinances that should have been amended or repealed based upon a new ordinance put that in happened. place. It, but what's going to take its place? This ordinance. But I mean, okay, what is so, this? So right? what you're saying is, if I can speak here, um, ordinance number 10, section 2, what does that say? Now, I think that's what you're asking. Right? Well, I'm, I'm trying to okay. get an understanding yeah. of what we're trying to pass here because I don't okay. fully understand. I mean, I understand that, you know, we have some, there's a lot of things that's lumped into this. It's what yeah. it kind of appears to. And some of it is definitely outdated and needs to be addressed. But what are we adding to it? Okay. You know, I mean, so what's going to be part of the new 10, I guess, is... All right, what so I don't understand. what's going to happen is that 10 is going to shrink considerably because most of these have been uh, replaced by the nuisance ordinances that have been passed. So, for example, uh, Ordinance 10, Section 2, there's a ban on disorderly conduct. Our public nuisance law already has that. So when the public nuisance ordinance was passed, that should have been repealed. It wasn't. So we're it doing it now. Updated yeah. or okay, so basically you're going to move some of the existing ordinances that we have, that we passed in yeah. the future... So we're not really adding anything no. new. We're just adjusting yeah, where it's going to be located under the ordinance. Okay, I got, I got you. I got Cleaning you. I got you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. In, in the books, get rid of the garbage. It's already been repealed. Never been repealed, but never been recorded. Is what we're trying to do. Okay, I, I, I understand. That's like I said, I just want to make sure we weren't adding something in yeah. there. No, we're not. We're not creating new offenses. Here. Okay, because <laughs> if we did, I didn't understand yeah, what, we're, no, what we are, we're trying to accomplish. Yeah, yeah we're it. we're not changing any anything that's illegal in here is going to still be illegal after we repeal this. Yeah, well, I guess the discussion around the gun is to me, it's you know, I mean, that's that's where I kind of kind of start throwing me off here. Is that okay. you know, okay, now we're yeah. making new rules. No. Under this ordinance, and I don't really yeah. want to go there. We just had the yet. Second Amendment in 2019. Right? So yeah, the 2018 was when the Second Amendment Preservation Ordinance was passed. Okay. So um, that that would repeal that would um, repeal the council's ban on concealed carrying. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. And that's what I was referring to because it's a statewide thing that it was repealed. And somehow it didn't I remember our discussion around this. I was just get wondering that, you know, yeah. Yeah. So we're not changing nothing as far no. as we've already well, yeah, done in the past. Yeah, we've so garbage that doesn't exist. Yeah. You have two ordinances, mm -hmm. one from 1954 and maybe one from 2018, mm -hmm. right? that are the same thing, but instead of having two, it's trying to make it one. Yeah, it has yeah. better language. Yes. yes. Yeah. Got it. More yeah. current and up-to-date language. More good or Because yeah. I'm allowed to wear pants now. Yeah, <laughs> and exactly. Have a, have a <laughs> and have an interracial marriage. Not in Sonoville. Oh. Yeah. In Sonoville, you're not allowed. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah. Right. okay, so if you I got it. The, the timeline for the way gun ownership worked, uh, the state didn't have a policy about concealed carry, so we made it illegal. Then the state said, everybody concealed carry. Well, as of this year, the state said cities can ban it on their properties. So um, this ordinance, which was probably only in effect for, like, from 1954 to 57, was uh, not, enforce, or not, not enforceable under law until January 1st of this year. So, we're, uh, because the council wanted to, because the council passed the 2018 Second Amendment Preservation Ordinance, this is making sure the ordinance is in line with what they right did. Right to bear arms. Yeah. Okay. And you're saying, but we don't have the right to conceal it. Uh, yeah, so the, the state does allow the city to ban concealed carry on city-owned properties. But we didn't pass that. No. We did in 1954. But we did not pass that in 2019. Or 2018, changed yeah. it. Yeah, and so in 2018, there was a, the, the resolution was a, a policy statement, but it didn't actually amend the ordinance. It just right. says we support the Second Amendment, not... But what I'm yeah. saying is, you get a, you know, if J.D.'s got a concealed weapons permit and he's carrying it, yeah. you know, it's legal in our city, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah that was the question well, I asked. Up, yeah. up until January 1st of this year. Of so now we're yeah. saying so it's as not of, as of, Yeah, as of January 1st of this year, because of a law that was passed in last year, mm -hmm. that ordinance, which has been unenforceable for the last 40 years, is suddenly enforceable again. It gave the That's city the right to allow him no. to conceal yeah. his weapon. So the because law. we had yeah. this hangers-on on the books for the last 40 years, that law change that right. happened wow. suddenly yeah. says it's in effect again. 
So now we can get rid of that ordinance, then we can still, we got to Because I am a proponent of, you, you got to permit to conceal, yeah, exactly. to conceal it. The, the 2021 of the 1954 <laughs> Got it. Yes. moved it all forward and made it legal. All right, Roger. Which is like, so like, like my son says, if you're going to carry a concealed carry, so, so it doesn't instigate any problems, then carry an open carry where someone's going to think he's going to cause problems and, and yeah. cause a problem with it, yeah. which is a, why they concealed carry. Okay. Okay. Anyway, where all am right. I here? Next. Do any other people wish to testify? Does anyone wish to testify? Is there a testimony that has been offered? We did. So I, I will now, before I close this and continue, close and continue, close or continue the public hearing. Are there any additional questions from council members or staff? Or anyone that has testified once the hearing has been closed, only council members may or staff may speak. Public testimony is now over. The public hearing is now closed. Unless there's any any questions. Council should discuss the ordinance and make its decision. So now we make a motion to to appeal at yeah the to read by this, title yeah, right. motion read to by read title. by title yeah. and adopt. Yeah. So I make a motion that um, we allow Alex to read this ordinance by title only, uh, 2203. I second. All in favor. Hi. Hi. Can I vote on this one? Yes. I don't see any water here. <laughs> Unless right. you wore pants when you did water. Uh, <laughs> any, the, any, any, any opposed? No. Motion carries. Right. Reading by title, ordinance 2203, amending ordinance number 10. Yeah. All right, now we have a vote on passing. Go for it. All those in favor? Aye. Second by? <laughs> she said. Okay, we got a motion a motion on the floor and it's been a second in. Do we yeah, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh nays, no noise. Motion carries. Okay. That one had some gray area I just oh <laughs> now what we got one of clarification. Next page. Next page. <laughs> yep. Three, four. Four. Ordinance number thirty one. Yep. Do it. It's the same thing again. Same thing again. Open it, read it. Be faster, Roger. Be faster? I need to, I need I should have a recorder here. Recorded one time he just kept pushing the button to play. <laughs> well, I think he's got it right there. Yeah. He hasn't read it yet. I will now open a public hearing to consider the ordinance. The hearing may be be conducted as follows. I will make an open I will make an open statement and set any ground rules. This week will follow, be followed by discussions of ex parte contact or conflict of interest. On any part of the council members, Alex McCanny will be present. We represent the ordinance. Council members may ask questions. If the speaker at any point in the hearing, the public will have the opportunity to ask questions during the public testimony. When testifying, please give your name and address to the record. For those of you testifying, please give testimony related to your application and be as concise as possible. Although it is not necessary in most hearings, we may ask to limit your testimony to no more than five minutes. Does anyone in the audience have any questions, uh, objections to the city council jurisdiction in this matter? No. Does any member of the city council have any conflict of interest regarding this request? Is it, is it, if so, please indicate the nature of your conflict of interest and leave the council table if necessary. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> right. So you said this one means a lot to me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Has any council members had pre-hearing conflict, conflict contact with any party involved in this case, either for or against the proposal? If so, please explain your pre-contact hearing common thread to this one. Uh, when I first read about this amendment, I informed uh, Council President Olivares uh, that we have a city ordinance banning skateboards. So yeah. I think I probably talked to Mayor Perry about it again, yeah. both way before um, this was on the agenda. So this wow. is ridiculous. Yep. <laughs> That's back to the morals, though, because skateboarders were oh, just... Oh, I thought you meant back on. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So when the pickup well. breaks down, I got transportation. <laughs> 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 I'll put you behind my truck. <laughs> Up to this point in time, we have a city park yeah. with lots of pavement and sidewalks yeah. and stuff over there, and the kids couldn't skateboard over there, yeah. even in the park. We'll, we'll, we'll continue with the script. Yeah, that's all. Okay. <laughs> I'll make an argument. 
I will have Alec had in the city recorder read the ordinance in its entirety, or unless someone on the council would like to oh, make yes. a motion to have him read by title only. The city recorder has fully fulfilled the charter requirements for this ordinance to be read by title only. <laughs> Alex McCann, the city recorder will present the ordinance. Okay, uh, in 1979, uh, 78, the city banned skateboards. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> I, don't, I think we're all a little crazy right now. I know I am. Uh, I don't think there's a reason to have a skateboard. <laughs> well, what's you, the liability you, you, if somebody wrecks one over in the park and breaks you, a leg? You would be, you would have a you, would, you would not believe how many of them went up the top of the hill and tried coming down this on skateboards. So it's it it's kind of their snowed. problem. Didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we used to go over that bump right there and down Main Street. Anyway. But my only comment on this is that, you know, even though we pass it and allow skateboards in the city, if we wanted to post it at the park, we could do that still, right? Yes. Yeah. I mean, so if they start using it to bounce off the buildings or start doing, you know, property damage or something like that, we could post it, yes. right? Park rules and everything. But do any of them even know that that is a rule here? No, no I doubt it. I'm just, I'm just saying, yeah. you know, is it, is it, you know, we're not opening ourselves up to where we can't ban sure, certain yeah, areas, sure. right? No, we, we still have, yeah, okay, that's something that'll be huh? able to change yeah. later, but we have a, a list of park rules that are in place. I, I don't know yet. Okay. Don't do anything okay. that damages. Does any council staff have any questions? Okay. No. That's the next cycle here. Okay. All people wish to testify on behalf of this ordinance will now testify a member to give you a name and address for the records. Does any council members have any questions? Please. Wait, okay. you, didn't, yeah. you didn't give us a minute. Well, Dang. He wouldn't want me to hurry up. So. Wait to I think we ought to amend this. Because if, I mean, I really do. Because kids, kids are going to be kids. And if, now this is banning skateboards, right? No, we no. have no. This, is, this is repealing the ban on skateboards. Yeah. So skateboards well, were banned skateboard. in 1978. I think we ought to bring it back just for the park, not no. on city streets. No. We, can, we no. can restrict it to the no. parks without having this ordinance in play. Yeah. It's okay. not even an issue. I mean, yeah, it's yeah. not. I mean, it's one of those things that makes a stupid law. Yeah. Roller skates. Get rid of it. Bicycles. <laughs> you can hurt yourself all sorts of ways. Doing. I can hardcore. walk and hurt myself. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, you should see some of the bike okay. I see. Okay. I was just that. trying to make it work yeah. in our favor. We need to get Roger his gavel. Yeah. 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 Here you go. Okay. Okay. I apologize. I was just going to make an argument to okay. make it pretty bad. Let's get on. Does any council member or staff have any questions? Do any other people wish to testify? Does anyone wish to testify in rebuttal of any testimony that's been given, been offered? Before I close the, the, the continue the public hearing, are there any additional questions, council members from the staff, or anyone in the test testified that once the hearing has been closed, only council members or staff will, may speak? Public testimony is now over. Public hearing is now closed. I make a motion that we read the ordinance 2204 by title only. <laughs> only took 17 of them to get it, huh? Exactly. <laughs> Got this baby figured out now. <laughs> I second it. That All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? No. Nope. Motion carries. Okay. Let's yes, read it by title only. Now you got to yes. use it. Ordinance 2204 abolishing ordinance number 31. Okay. And, and now we make the motion again. Yep. yep. Yeah, a motion to adopt or abolish this ordinance. Yes, accept ordinance 2204. Yeah. I second. second it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes. Ayes have it. Wins again. <laughs> now, one more time. Yeah, oh, that's the end of those. So the next Yay. one is going to be the contract review board. So. But it's that's going to be simple. You'll just say I open the contract review board hearing and then hit the table with your gavel. Okay. Um, just just say I open the, the hearing. <laughs> open the hearing. Oh, simple. So. Uh, I'm not a politician. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, we have a couple of uh, uh, three things on here to uh, look at approving as the contract review board. Uh, the first step is with a, a company called Carson, which is a subsidiary of Seco Inc. We wanted to get a Pacific Pride card because 
Uh, it's kind of beyond our staff's capability right now to pay for gas up front. Uh, so and then wait for 30 days yes. or so. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So the idea here, just so everybody knows, is that Pacific Pride doesn't make agreements directly. They operate franchises. So we're making an agreement with a company called Carson, which is a subsidiary of Seco Inc. Uh, to get a Pacific Pride card. So uh, that's that one. Does it make any difference being the anal person that I am that this is Karen, that person? No, so we're approving okay. the, the agreement, so you were all provided okay. with the, the agreements there. Okay. Okay, so do you need a motion is what you're after now? Yeah. Yep, yeah, so there's a suggested motion for... Okay, I moved to uh, make a motion to approve the presented agreements with Carson. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? No, nope. ayes have it. Motion carries. Uh, the next one is an agreement with Wilco. So there was kind of, a, I think, a mix-up with how they uh, were sending documents to us. So we have a charge account with Wilco. Um, I signed an application to see if we could get a charge account set up. And once I sent it in, um, all they had sent me was the, the application. So I signed it and sent it in. They said, great, you're approved. And that was that. Turns out uh, Stan Smith, our previous public work director, had actually contacted them a year before and at that point in time, they had sent both the application and the terms and condition, which the council should have um, approved before um, we started using the charge account over there. Um, so I think the problem was that they thought they had already sent it to us, because if they just searched their email inbox for Sodaville, they would have seen us having gotten this already and just assumed we were okay with it. Uh, so the uh, motion here is to approve the uh, terms and conditions so that we can continue using that with the council's authorization. So we need a motion. I move to approve the credit account terms and conditions, including Federal Truth and Lending Act disclosures with Wilco Valley Agronomics LLC. At current levels, right? Pardon me? At current levels? Yeah. <clears throat> I know it says existing, so we're doing it at current levels. Yeah, there's, there's no changes. Right. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right. So the next thing is a kind of a, it's going to be a, a two-part uh, thing. This is the first step in the process to renew our uh, insurance through CIS. We get it with Rhodes Warden Insurance in town. Um, so they provided us with a list of proposals. Um, the only substantive change from the, for the uh, liability insurance we get next year is that um, their cybersecurity coverage is no longer free. Um, they had included that for a while, but cybersecurity attacks have grown so numerous in the last couple of years, really because of the, the digital transformation nationwide. Because of COVID, everybody's way more online, and a lot of hackers are doing way more things. So they're no longer able to absorb cybersecurity attacks. Uh, attacks, uh, but the the actual um, increase isn't going too much. I think it's like five hundred dollars. I think at most, it's not like it's not a bad thing, and that's accounted for. Which so is probably a smart thing. Six hundred fifty. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Six fifty and a smart thing to do. So yeah. So you need a motion. That's to annual. Approve the yep. Proposal, mm -hmm. Proposals from Rhodes Warden Insurance Agency for the additional coverage. I'll second it. All in favor? All Aye. in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays? No. Motion carries. Cybersecurity was actually the topic for that magazine that I gave Ryan from LOC, how huge it is, this, how some cities have been held hostage and had to pay ransom to get their data back. So mm -hmm. yep, I can imagine. Muy important. Yeah. They go in there and okay. lock it up. So yep. Now we got to go. Yeah. Uh, so the next one is the, the medical hardship dwelling permit. So. Uh, we have to hand the gavel over to Adina because this is concerning Roger's property. All yours. So did he close the hearing that he had? Uh, actually, yeah, you can bang that and say it's the hearing. Yeah. Yeah. Motion. Motion. Count. Special meeting or the meetings are closed. Yeah, hearing. You need to open a hearing. So. Uh, yeah. Opening the hearing for medical hardship dwelling permit. So uh, Roger submitted an application with everything he needed to for his property, and he submitted the payment, which is the most important part, right? No. Uh, but yeah, he submitted it. Everything looks good. Um, we're supposed to mail it to everybody who lives in 100 feet. Yep, fit, she got it. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I did that. We're supposed to do it at least 10 days prior. That was mailed 10 days prior. So uh, the council can reject it if they want to, but he's filled out the paperwork. He's paid the fee. 
we contacted everybody who needed to be contacted. So um, I will say, Mr. Perry, so we're addressing him during this item. Do you have any special requests for your medical hardship permit on your property? Do I have anything to say about it? No, not really. I no motion now? Yeah. Yes. I make a motion to approve the medical hardship permit submitted for 30834 Sunville Road. I second it. All those All in favor? All those in favor say aye. aye. I abstain. Any opposed? Aye. You guys do abstain. That's hearing is closed. Great. Now we give the gavel back to Rogers. How's <laughs> 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 most of it happen all night? No. <laughs> we got two minutes. <laughs> all right. Do we have any old business? <coughs> so we had enough new business. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh, now we really know which way to go. We're not done yet. You're asking for old business. Yeah, I've got a question. Yeah. How about the whole 25 mile an hour speed limit thing. This town that I went into just the other day, they had it on the road. In on the lettering? Yeah, in the lettering. Yeah. And they actually had it in multiple places, just to remind people. Is that something we want to look into? Well, the, the biggest problem we have there, and I understand and I agree with you 100%, mm -hmm. the biggest problem is the city of Soderville does not own those roads. Right, there's county the roads, county. we can't do anything. To we, can't, we, we can't even put a flashing yellow light out there to warn people because it's county road. I mean, we could do it. We could do it on Alder Street. We could do it down on Fisher, but we can't do it on the main roads that are the problem. Yeah. So what do we have to do to get the county to do it? You have to you get have somebody from the them. county road department involved with it. So yeah. we have to go over there and we have to present them with a. Let's go. Let's go talk to Will Tucker. No, that's the number one thing. That's the yeah. first place to start. Actually, yeah. is rather than go to the road department, go yeah. to the county Will commissioners. Because he just he took John Lindsay's. Space again, he'd already retired, but I talked to him like last week, and so he's taken yeah, over. Yeah, John's yeah. Sherry Springer, she, yeah. she's a good listener. Yeah, she they might. all are actually. Yeah, the problem we've got is like what you say. I mean, they come past my place at 99 miles an hour. That little yeah. guy in the white car, I don't know that's who it loud. Is. Well, a lot of the dump trucks going to the rock quarry and back. Oh, they, that they, they fly through there quite uh -huh. a bit. You know the the house on the corner where I'm coming out of Soda Road. Soda Road. Road. <laughs> Their trees are so <laughs> big. Yes. I have to be ticket. out in the road. People drive by me through there, and I get forty two and gives me a ticket. And they just freaking fly down. That road. <laughs> and why should you have to go around to get on a street that you should be able to just pull up? Yeah. And right. Well, the problem is, I think our setbacks on that street down are probably five foot from the property line. Yeah. So talking to them about trimming the trees might. And they were just out here trimming the trees. Well, uh, the county sent that mower through yeah. here, but yeah. the place like coming up Spring Street, yeah, getting on the Soderville Road where he needed to trim all yeah. that bush off yep. over there. They didn't do anything. They didn't do anything. The only so thing they did was flung the garbage around. You just saw the fence he got caught in the bottom of that blade down there on the, <laughs> <Ruh -roh>. the <laughs> Spring Street corner. Yep. Oh, yeah. 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 I got you. Um, not to get off tangent, but the, the county just moved those two speed signs down there off of Mountain Home Cutoff. They moved them further out. Further west? Yeah. The 25 and the 45. And unfortunately, I don't think we can control any of the drivers, but I'm surprised at how high up. I mean, that 25 mile an hour signs at your property. Uh, yeah. That should be down before Spring Street. Yeah, I agree. Even, I mean. Yeah. Right. Well, like I say, and what Peggy's agreeing to, probably the best thing we could do, go to Will Tucker, yeah. Jerry Springer, go to the commissioners first, because mm -hmm. they'll make the road department listen. Yes, and... You know what? I'll work with you if you would like Is to there, help me, and I will go. We'll go. Do also, it. the the school. I got a big mouth. I don't know if we can talk to the school too, but those people come ripping through the neighborhood because they don't. They don't have. They come in this way, but when they leave, they all drop down. Yeah, yeah they could send notices out to their parents to be 
conscientious of our road yeah. system. I mean, I mean we actually had out there this, this year, J.D., over there in that corner by the school, people going to school and crashing their cars. Has there been a few? Yeah. Yes, there been a few. Yeah. Pretty, pretty, pretty yeah. very much. Yeah. It, it's time that we approach it again and try and do something about it yeah. again. For as far as the again. school, we need to get with them around yeah. the beginning of the school year and yeah. yeah. have them send something out. I agree with that. Too. So that's something we can hey, if they can later. do it in Crowfoot, we can do it in Soderville. I wonder, do they have school board meetings down there? At I, Crowfoot? No, I, at this school. I, I don't, don't think know that they, they do. do. I think they are members of, of the, the Lebanon school. Yeah, it's a charter yeah. school. Charter school. They, they do have members of the advisory board, board though. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe I'm we 50. need to find out when their advisory board meets and have a couple of representatives from, from the city go down and say, hey, you know, we appreciate your school being in our neighborhood. But please tell the parents to slow down. Now, are you just talking council members going or citizens of Soderville? You probably want the council members. To yeah, do. council members. Would probably okay. Sure. But I agree. If somebody could go to Will Tucker about slowing the traffic. From I know Will really well. Yes. I mean, that would just cover a small percentage. Yes. Well, you know. What's that? Oh, just talking to the school. Well, but it, okay. during the school, business school year, yes. it's an issue. Mm -hmm. So, um, the state's giving out millions of dollars for uh, improvements to buildings for the uh, purpose of being cooling shelters when things get super hot. Um, I was thinking it might be nice to be able to offer that to people in the city uh, if during the office hours, during the summer, if there's a really bad heat warning. we can They can give us money to repair the air conditioner and get some smoke get filtration in there, so if you're all good with that, I can talk to them about getting some money. And when we're in the office, if people don't have uh, a way to cool themselves, they can come here and get a TV. I've got a GameCube. I'll, kids can play. I'll do refreshments. <laughs> I'll do refreshments. So is this air conditioner broke? No. No. I think we can get a better one, though. Okay. Get one of the built in things. Yeah. 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 Just one split heat pump. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Many split. Yeah, they've got millions of dollars and they're just begging people to take the money. <laughs> see if oh, we can't get a. Because uh, I doubt other people can come yeah, in. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, see if we can get money to have a deficit. Awesome. Mini splits. Oh, there you Those go. Are very nice. It's like, say, I don't know other. No, I just wanted to let you know. Yeah. Make sure you can't do it. So, what do you think? I just want to share one thing on the council. Wait, 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 wait. I'm just trying to. No, I know we want to leave, but I want to share. I don't know if they I don't care. I just, I just want to know if we're any more business. Okay. I have to. I put my papers away here. Council report. I just want to um, share. We had an incident on my street. I don't know if everybody's aware. Is it the guy in the? Yes. Oh, I, that's what I was saying. I have cameras. I checked in the morning. I saw a guy was checking my truck. <coughs> Thank you. And um, off he went. Coming to find out with the other neighbors, he robbed two cars. Um, got away with a weapon and one of them. That. Um, I believe the weapon has been recovered. But just kind of a heightened awareness. We apparently our street lights have been out for a week or two, uh, so I'm sure that didn't help. Huh? Don't leave, leave your weapon in your car. Don't leave doors. anything in your car and lock your door. Was it a local guy? I. One of the locals around here had, rec had recognized the person and told told some friends of mine where where to find him and the weapon. And. and, they, and I, I don't know what happened. I don't know if the guy's still walking and breathing yet or not. I don't know. I haven't talked to him since. Mr. Mayor, you need to do something about that. No, well, no. when was the timeline last night? It was 4, 4 no, 35 anymore. in the morning on Sunday. Okay. Yeah. Well, I just, there's a certain person, a few deputies at a house near mine that took a guy into custody. It was last week, so before. Yeah. yeah. The the deputy came on site and he was very good. He went and checked out all the neighbors to see and as it evolved, first it was just one neighbor across the street and then a little bit later found out another There's guy. There's a lot of riffraff going through. That car that crashed up here and was towed down to the park. When the sheriffs came out here they said not the people you want in your community. That's right. We well, have to start being really walk, careful. So. <laughs> Thanks for letting me know. He was bold. I mean my light yeah. triggered on and he still looked in our truck and walked over to our I shed. Saw him. Yeah, there was a room. I don't care. Yeah. Yes. I make a Thank motion to adjourn. Okay. We have Anyone second on that? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I don't, don't care on her anymore. Can I tell him what I told you? Can you turn that off? That was a. And.